listen to the brand new season of the Voice of Survival podcast every other Friday right here on the Journey into Comics Network at journeyintocomics.com. The following the following is a journey into comics. Journey into comics. A journey into comics. A journey into comics. Journey into comics. Journey into comics. Network. 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 Production. Production. We're gonna fuck the sodomites in the dick. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Podcast Feed, episode 88. I'm your host, Dick. We got Tyler here. We got Matt here. Say hi. Now. Hi. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, ex- I'm accepting that as a hi. You're not my supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> we also got long-time guest. It's been a long... By that, I mean it's been a long time. <laughs> Blaine is bad at speaking. I, I can't talk. Uh, welcome back, Jack. Hello, hello. Good to be here. It's good to have you here. How many how many times on a daily or weekly basis do people rhyme, rhyme shit with your name just to do it on purpose? Well, the people who are classy enough not to say anything about Mihoff and... Um, <laughs> yeah, so not as many as you think. It gets mo- me every time. The first, it's the first one that I generally hear. And then the, the Christians I work with, they're the best because they're like, hit the road, Jack. You know, it's just like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, very funny, clean joke there, buddy. Yeah. So. Look at you with your morals and your decency. Yeah, yeah. Say some cuss words, pussy. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Huh. But we're glad your, we're glad you survived. I wish your, your last name here. was Soft. <laughs> Jack Soft. Oh, oh okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my I favorite, got them too. I got the, the jokes too. My favorite one is the whole "If I was an uncle and I was stuck on a horse, would my nieces and nephews help their uncle Jack off a horse?" And I like that one personally. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awful. It's, it's so long winded. <laughs> Yeah, but it it's, works. It's but it is it gets strangely it get... popular. So <laughs> <laughs> we're we're a very we're a weird species. <laughs> well, that brings <laughs> weird about a day. That brings me to my first topic. Oh God, he already has a topic. You know what I hate more than anything on this earth? Other people, unfrosted pop tarts. People. Yeah. Oh, so we're not going with other people. We're just. Going... People. people i hate i hate you <laughs> i hate myself i just fucking hate our species like i hate it this might be a good time for me to uh take this in a dark direction i am not really too afraid of the apocalypse at this point because i feel like maybe we better start preparing things are getting a little wild here on earth yeah yeah like remember remember when the show doomsday preppers was popular no like mild. Well, I mean, I assume it was, but I have I, I just don't have cable. I don't, I don't yeah, watch TV. It was it was popular like when we were in high school, mm. and you know, because we were we were fucking in preparation for the fucking Mayan calendar twenty twelve. Everything's gonna fucking fall off the ah! <laughs> And then uh, I remember doing that. And then obviously nothing happened. You know, like just like Y two K. I was but, hoping twenty twelve was real. <laughs> yeah, like I fucking I just I, I fucking hate people, man. Dude, I I okay, I, I'll just be honest, like I've got a plan and I'm not even I there's no fear in it. I'm like, okay, in this life I'm trying to be nice and do good for people and stuff and That's trying good. to spread good. good ideas or ideas that I think are good. But if the apocalypse happens, if it all fails, I'm going full cannibal raider. I You're doing I, cannibal raider? Or not just raider? I mean, I would rather fight a person to the death than wildlife. 
That's fair. There's a lot of easy targets. Look around. This is America. There's gonna be they're gonna be ripe for the pickings. So that hurts, dog. I brought I brought this <laughs> I brought this topic up on the show before I think, and if not, it was just to people like Cameron and you, and like no, actually this was post Cameron. This was this was my new Cameron at, at, at work where I work at now. Um, I told him we were having a conversation about life and all kinds of shit one day. And I was like, let me ask you this. Tell me if you think this is weird or not, and I'll ask this question again now. He is 19, so tail end of our, well, he's not our generation. He's the generation after us. But I said, if the fucking world collapsed right now, you know, in its apocalypse mode, and my family is starving... I will fuck, and I know you have food. I will kill you and take every fucking thing that you have. But would you eat a people? I I don't think I would eat a people unless I absolutely had to. But I explained this to him. I was like, look, dude, I'm not doing it to be a dick. I'm doing it to fucking survive. My survival is more important than your survival. And my child's survival is more important than my survival. I was, sorry, go ahead. And I said, you know... If I fucking kick down your door, because I'm a door kicker, I'm a beefy boy. I get you. I get you. It's a thrill. It's a rush. Yeah. And I fucking just murder you. I'm not going to murder your mom and your sister and, like, a little baby. Now, do you really want to I'm going to make them my harem. <laughs> do you really want to do all that, or do you just want to kick down a door? Oh, it's not. This isn't a B and E scenario. <laughs> More about the harem. Glad you caught, picked up on that. <laughs> no, I just, I just said that in jest, but... Um, I mean, I'm going to do whatever I got to fucking do. Yes. And I'm going to do it smart. Because if I go, my family's fucked. <laughs> may I ask you a question? You may. Okay. So this is always the first thing people say about when the apocalypse scenario comes up. They're always about survival. You know, my family, my family. This It's like my family would have grown up in the modern world. Why would they want to continue living in a post-apocalyptic world? I, I mean, um... Now, we're all talking funny hypotheticals here, but seriously, like, I think I would just either abandon them or, I mean, we're talking post-apocalypse. Your worst your worst instincts had to come out. So, well, maybe I not, don't expect to live long in the apocalypse. Maybe not our worst instincts, but actually our natural instincts to just fucking kill and maim everything around us because that's know, what we are as a species. I, don't I just know, don't expect to live long. I don't know. I absolutely have no idea how I would fare in the in the post-apocalyptic apocalyptic world and a lot of a lot of people would jest and say yeah okay blaine you'll you won't last for shit but i honestly don't know you would nobody would you would die without me and that's that's a great (laughs) excuse to you would fucking die you don't know how to do anything i know how to do a lot of you know how to do that stuff i know how to do this stuff and i know how to do a lot of things like what i just don't do them like what uh like start a fire how i'm not gonna go into those details on the show started a fire though without Without, without incendiary stuff, tools, if it's okay. been a while, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I pose. I, I would die immediately. Well, probably, but th- I pose probably. this to you guys: if the apocalypse <laughs> happens, that means good evil has prevailed. Okay, and and, and it's only about like who's going to survive, who's tough. No, we're all going to die horribly in the apocalypse. That is a great excuse to spend your remaining time high on adrenaline. Go crazy. Do horrible things just because it doesn't matter. <laughs> evil won. Be evil. It, like, if I see a survivalist camp, I'm not going to attack them first. I'm going to go cut their tarps. They just collect water. I'm just – just to be a dick. I mean, why? <laughs> you're not even, why not? You're not even using them for yourself. You're just like – No, no. Them. Just just to cause chaos. Fuck cause as much chaos them. as possible. Blow up your own camp. <laughs> Fucking wild card, baby. Like, just <laughs> – just don't don't let reason dictate what you do. Don't let survival instincts and stuff. I say go berserk. Go do fucking whatever hard. Go hard in the any given moment. Yeah, you see, some, you see, like some fucking. <laughs> mind. I can't go too off the rails here, but it's just you see what I'm saying. Like, oh, what now more... you choose to not go off the Are rails. You fucking animals this... and stuff. Tra- Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you see some fucking animal, just run up, go fuck that animal, go, whatever. <laughs> what matters anymore? It's the apocalypse. Well, Live out your last days I, as a for wild one, man. Think samesies is gross. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think that would happen. I don't know that I would abandon my family. Well, I not, was not gonna be... say like drown them or something. I like, yeah, can't I, abandon them, but I couldn't. They're I could, not. Unless, they're gonna get you killed. Unless my kid was gonna starve to death, I couldn't. I couldn't drown I my think kid. That, You're already uh, a parent, though, so it's like 
Yeah, I understand. I think what you're saying is what would not happen because of the fear instinct of I need to survive and how strong that is in everybody. Hmm. We naturally so, have it. But you could also snap and just go fucking. But no matter how the only much way I could see that happening is if you're already a little bit heat and it just breaks you. <laughs> well, you're already broken. <laughs> like it, it's it's an exciting thought. It's it's you know it's not what I want, but it's just like hmm. Well, I I just that's what my, my, where my mind's. At. I've decided that if the apocalypse happens. I'm not going to. I'm going to give up. And what by give up? I mean I'm just going to let go of my humanity. <laughs> that's fair. Just, well. Uh, <laughs> In regards to Jack up. and his animal fucking <laughs> adventures, um, I'm going to stick with my harem idea because I, I didn't think that was too bad. Okay, well, let me put it on Pac-Ups. Hunt Tyler. That's number one. <laughs> Hunt Tyler. Just because you want my fucking harem. Steal his harem. My claim. I'm going to wear your skin while I get him. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Dahmer. <laughs> he didn't say he was going to eat him. We got to wear him, too. I said get him, so it's we got to cut how you will. Alex Taylor says, I told my mom the other day that if I were God, I would blow us all up. She gave me a mildly concerned look. <laughs> she also said, I'm guessing in response to the apocalypse, I would just kill myself. <laughs> That's fair. A lot. Like I would that. have as much fun as possible. I, like I said, I expect to live like a, maybe a week. Honestly. So I'm going to have so much fun. I'm, first, I'm a, anybody that looks like they might have drugs, dead. Immediately, <laughs> so you can have I, I would, drugs. I would leave food behind to carry more drugs. Like it's, <laughs> it's gonna be a great week. He's gonna yes. survive a week off of cocaine alone, <laughs> <laughs> or die in a week because of cocaine alone. You know, you know that sh- that video game Apex Legends. Yes, you'd be like that octane character just on coke. Yeah! Faster, 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 faster. <laughs> I mean, I, I live a sedentary life. I'm just talking about you know. I would die. Guys, alternate you, universe. You guys remember that news article where the bear found like a cache of coke in the woods, mm-hmm. and like it, it's like bear local bear finds like so many pounds of cocaine in the woods, and then it, the, the caption below it that says, "For eight minutes of that bear's life, it was the most apex predator on the planet." <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> dude. My favorite one is where the fucking uh, like pig, wild pig in Australia fucking drank like eight beers and yeah. then tried to fight people or other animals tried to fight like a fucking water buffalo or like, something i would i would Passed find out on the beach i would try to find some pcp as like a last resort like if i'm gonna go down i'm going down fighting eight cops at once while jerking off <laughs> while getting tased while getting tased climbing a light pole last time i was here I'm I... Zeus! Oh! <laughs> Hey, no mortal time, man can beat me. <laughs> I told you guys about my – you remember that story out in Indianapolis? Um, I guess it was out? two years ago. Those two brothers with the PCP? I, I, not to, I didn't tell you that story? Maybe. No. I don't remember it's it. It's believable. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, boy. I didn't tell you guys this. Are we now, in I, for a trip? Dude, you won't, you don't, you're not going to believe me, and I have the news article to prove oh, it. Okay. Okay, I'll, I will try to condense it. I don't want to take up too much time, but I'm terrible at podcasting for not telling this story. It's probably my best story, honestly. Sitting on the couch. And you're, and you're just blowing your load right now. <laughs> Dude, you're not even saving it for another day. Where the, the, but my, I, I guess it's right. right the we're talking about might happen it. tomorrow. You know? We're talking fly, about it right fly, now, my so friend. now is the time. Well, um, okay. Alex says, oh my fucking God, I know this story. Yeah, those were my neighbors, Alex. They were my next door neighbors. 6619 Cape Nettick Court was where I lived. And they were 6623, I believe. Got you. So Setting a scene. I'm sitting on the couch with Kinsey. This is in Indianapolis Southside Apartments uh, called Lighthouse Landings. Great commercial for them right now. Oh, man. <laughs> so <laughs> they, um, I'm sitting on the couch with Kinsey, and two flashes go by. Our porch, the porch door's open. Two flashes go by on the porch, okay? And I barely notice it, and Kinsey's... Uh, just kind of like, I, I think two naked people just came by. And I was like, you know, kind of looked, I thought she was joking or something, you know, some, I, not everything she says is funny, so I was just like, hmm. And <laughs> well, she's, she's a woman. She, yeah, you know, you know. So um, I kind of started, she said, no, Jack, I, I, think, I think those guys were naked. And I said, okay. So I get up, and I look out the uh, back door, and I just see two ham like Christmas ham pink asses just streaking down the side of the pond. I there was all these, yeah, all the apartment buildings. I love buildings the imagery. Are, yes, there's all these apartment buildings are, uh, there's like eight of them around a pond. And four, uh, two buildings down, three buildings down, there was a dumpster area. They're heading straight for the dumpster area. There's two naked dudes, okay? 
Okay. At first I see it and I go, no, I'm, I'm done. I, I'm not involved here. I don't want anything to do with this. And I'm, go- I'm going back inside and I'm just like, I kind of stop. I'm like, God damn it. I can't just not see what this is about. Or what's about what's going to happen. What's happening? Like, what will happen? Did, are these two kid sex slaves that just escaped a serial killer? And what like, happen next? Do they need help? You know, I'm like, all right, well, let's go find out what's going on. So Life's I'm, an adventure, you know, and you got to really... Sometimes you just got to expose those Christmas hands and let her run. Oh. Yeah. Let the dog eat. Oh, if only. And if, and if you're not going to, watch the people that will, because who knows what they're going to do. Right. So, um, <laughs> apparently, there's something in the air around the dumpster area, because when they get there, the two brothers, you know, adrenaline and whatever drug, I, I would say PCP, pump into their veins, they just turn on each other, okay? <laughs> they start making out. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. The news article... Uh, Called it a fight. It was no fight. I'm, I'm telling you, they were being. They just didn't want to print what happened. I, I swear to God, I'm looking at this. I'm probably 20 yards away, but there's no mistaking what's going on. I mean, hands are going around, ass cheeks into the cracks. I mean, this state, this state won't sell cakes to the gays. <laughs> the homosexual Dude, they were community. brothers. They were brothers. It goes so much deeper in homosexuality. This is the kind literally. Of thing. They it won't... physically went so much deeper. Dude, it, okay. <laughs> So, Fuck yeah, um, spread it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So um, at, by this point, somebody had contacted the office or they were just looking out their back window and saw these guys. Apartment manager comes up. At this point, overcome with passion, they'd collapse to the ground and they are trying to fuck each other. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, this uh, little Kia pulls up and the window rolls Wait, down. There's you straight up said overcome with passion? <laughs> I, I am just relaying the story as it is, as I remember. Okay. So, okay. I'm, guys, narration, you fuck. I, I, was, I, I just had to make sure he said it. You I, know? It was so surreal. Just, I'm like, I couldn't believe my eyes. I couldn't even call out for Kinsey. I'm just like, she, like wait a minute. I, I she abandoned you. I wouldn't let her go. I'm like, <laughs> it's two naked dudes. What if they shoot me and just, then just where are they pulling the gun from? Good, good point, but like I said, I didn't know where this was going. You know, the gun's I, their dick. I would have turned back. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. yeah, they're gonna. He shoot, was gonna get shot with, with their semen from the inside of her vagina. So I don't want to get her get shot with semen. They're yeah. on PC, PCP. Who knows how hard that shit can go out? Oh. Yeah. So um, <laughs> here's my favorite part. So the apartment manager lady, she pulls up. She In rolls her. She rolls her window down and. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what she said to him, but I'm guessing it was what the hell. And uh, hi, hi. I hear hey, they, you stop that. They both look up at her, still just, hi. just knuckle deep in each other. <laughs> Why did you say knuckle deep? <laughs> and they go, I'm gonna try to recreate this. Look at us! Look at us! Look at our love! Don't you look away! <laughs> And then the older brother gets up, puts up, punches her in the fucking forehead, dude. And I'm like, oh, it just, this is, cops are on their way at this point. I'm like, oh, fuck, this is getting so real so fast. So um, I don't know how much more time passed because they kind of chilled after she hit the lady. She's screaming and driving away, yeah. and they're just kind of looking around, whipping their heads around, just like they just realized where they were. <laughs> cops come. And, um, I, I, at this point, I'm going back to the apartment, okay? I'm like, I don't want to talk to the police. I'm not telling them what I just saw. <laughs> they, they can figure it out for themselves. I'm going to share. I'm going to hold this. Withhold this information until one day I'm on a podcast and I can share this. Yeah. And and so uh, when I see the news article, <laughs> it's rife with inaccuracy, said that the police arrived to find them fighting. <laughs> maybe they were, I don't know, maybe they're arguing over who gets to come first, but they were definitely not angry at each other. <laughs> And uh, they had them covered with blankets in the photo, and they're just laying on the ground, and they told the cops they smoked mushrooms, which I was like, they, they even till the very end, they're just going to hold the line on just being ridiculous, because, of course, anybody does hallucinogens knows you can't smoke mushrooms. Obviously. So, um... <laughs> fucking nerd. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I was, they injected the marijuanas, I, I'm, and they became the gay. Not a bet. They had the reefer madness. 
Yeah, it was probably just marijuana. I wished I'd found out they were stone cold sober. That would have been a real <laughs> trip right look, there. Look at our love. Yeah, dude. I, don't you look away. Yes. <laughs> don't you look away. <laughs> so they meant it, you know, like they're just like so <laughs> they they were so happy for a minute, just loving life. <laughs> I've never been as happy as these two brothers fucking each other in the dumpster area <laughs> with an audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit man I'm just glad they didn't see me <laughs> start running at me <laughs> we're gonna fuck you there it is glad <laughs> they didn't one of see them. me oh man I, I, one of them okay the older brother was you know I, I don't know much about him but the news article went ahead and reported the, the younger brother was a fucking he worked at a hospital he had a job job <laughs> and it was just like oh god this poor bastard <laughs> Had a life. And <laughs> his older brother was probably just like some fucking loser, and he hooked him up with some drugs, and it fucked his life up. <laughs> and he fucked him too. <laughs> oh my god! Jesus. I wonder if they speak. <laughs> and their parents had to hire a lawyer for. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just I've never seen someone ruin their lives in the most in such a fucking carnal way. I'm like, I'm like, you can wait till after the apocalypse, guys. Like, don't have there yet. We're full circle now. Oh yeah. Wow. Could, the Ugh. charges were all dropped because I, I don't think anyone wanted to fucking have that trial. <laughs> we, dude, and if it was a, it's a felony in Indiana. Incest is a felony in Indiana. And that judge was like, no, I'm not, I'm not getting my first incest case on my test today. Get the hell out of my courtroom. Typewriter, you freaks. typewriter lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was, it was wild. <laughs> Thank you for that journey you just took us on. It's, it's it hotter in here now. It's great verbiage. I, I, I cherish that memory. <laughs> I, I don't I can tell. I don't remember very many Christmases <clears throat> of my childhood, but I do remember <laughs> the two brothers fucking. High yeah, the my, my fucking high horny neighbors <laughs> overcome with passion. <laughs> I mean, how hard, how horny do you have to be? You like look at your brother, like you know, last twenty three years. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean tonight. You. They were already naked before they went outside, so it's like, when Him did they... No! Yeah, like, I just like to think, like, what they do, like, they both t took a hit of PCP, and, you know, they're like, I'm feeling pretty good, and then they just look at each other, and they're like, <laughs> just lock eyes, start ripping each other's clothes Fucking off, tiny like, you know what, it's a little stuffy in here, <laughs> just <laughs> take off outside. <laughs> oh, I, I cannot wait for you to have children. For for multiple reasons, but this this is the number one reason. You're gonna sit your son or daughter down one day, and you're gonna tell the story, <laughs> and they're just gonna be looking at you like, <coughs> yeah, yeah, and and and, and Kinsey be like, yep, yep. <laughs> She's happen. gonna be standing with her hands on her hips. It's all true. That's how it. Happens. That's that's true, and and <laughs> and it's it, the best part of it was is like you know I'm no longer embarrassed about anything. You know I. I most embarrassing thing I ever did was probably uh, pull my dick out because I got too drunk at a party, and it was like not too long after high school, so there was definitely underage people there. So definitely committed a sex crime on accident when I was blacked out, took a piss on a couch, and it was it was very embarrassing. Uh, so sex crime and party foul, dude, dude, and these people didn't even <laughs> like me. You know, like I was I was like a party crasher almost. Like one so of my friends sound... was like, no, dude, you're cool. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure they hate me. So I go to the house, and it was the first time I'd done Jaeger bombs. Yeah, and Jaeger I wasn't even 21 yet, you know, and I'm like, you know, I thought my life was ruined. And then years later, I'm still holding on to that embarrassing memory. These guys wiped it away. I'm like, you know what? Life ain't too bad. You know, things happen. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never have that moment. They're things never happen. going – no one's ever going to top them. They're, the, the shame is just going to follow them to the grave, dude. Yes. Do you think they even remember? I hope so. How could you not? Say they remember the aftermath. Do, do they remember the, the the what the inside of their brother's rectum feels like? You know what I mean? Like there's there's their hair around the ass. Do they think both, about these things? They're both walking out of the fucking police station, bow legged. Ow. Like, uh, yeah, he's like, you can't take your brains off. <laughs> I think it still might be in there. 
What an awesome opening to this show. <laughs> it wow. was it was good. It was a good memory. This is so much better than the fucking hour of sports I've been listening to with Fuck these two. You. <laughs> Lighthouse Landings. Uh, maybe you shouldn't have raised your rent, and I wouldn't have started telling that story so much. <laughs> they raised their rent after it happened. I'm like, what are you thinking, dude? Like, <laughs> everyone wants to move out right now. They don't know what kind of people you're letting in. <laughs> and they just had a lot of people going, we want to live in a place that has some excitement. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of siblings are applying all of a sudden. <laughs> Oh no! Wow, <laughs> my fucking head hurts from laughing so hard. Yeah, life's weird. That was <laughs> life is so weird. <laughs> that, yeah. I think you said it best, Jack. Mm-hmm. Life is weird. Yeah, weird. life is weird. <laughs> if you really just think about it and ponder, man. Sometimes you ever sit back and think about how fucked up it is. Life, like man. one minute, you know, you're just drinking a beer, and the next, you know, you're watching two brothers fuck. <laughs> Yeah, overcome dude. with passion yeah i was playing the witcher 3 at the time and, and you know i was like man this, you know i was like great video game life's so good and stuff and now i have i'm like huh i mean you're you're in the middle of killing a fucking lesson and i don't know or fucking two, yeah I'll two never streaks be, of fucking ham going across your window i'll never be able to play that game again without that the, 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 every time i pick up a ham in witcher 3 i'm like oh <laughs> ptsd yeah, yeah get triggered oh yeah. man you know what I hate? You guys have siblings? <laughs> yep. I have three yep. brothers. I have two younger sisters. <clears throat> Don't do PV- PC. I about said PVC. Don't do PCP with them. Yeah, <laughs> and I will do the same. Yeah. And let's let, let's make a pact right here, right now. To do PCP. With we will each never other? do PCP with our siblings. I wonder if anybody watching is like texting their siblings, like, "Hey, you want to try PCP with me?" <laughs> Someone probably Come on, at least one of you out there is a real freak. (laughs) (laughs) Looking at you, AJ. (laughs) At least one of you has a fucking Christmas ham for an ass. I've been to Pornhub once or twice in my life. I know incest porn's on the rise. One of you's going to (laughs) crack. Last time I checked, it's the most popular search on fucking Pornhub. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Goddamn taboos. (laughs) I love how everybody, everybody that talks about it acts like they're so disgusted, but... The, it, being as popular as it is, I know that there's people who. I mean, shit. <clears throat> I know. The I step, the step, something is my favorite. Yeah. Point. Fuck yes, it is. I'm not ashamed it, to admit that's, it that's at the all, popular dude. One. I know. That's I was the popular one. Like Miranda, like went through like my Pornhub searches basically, and she's like, "Why are you looking at all this fucking incest shit?" And I'm like, "I'm not purposely going to that. It's just the popular thing." I, I, <laughs> it, I, I'm just like, oh, I recognize I that you. actress. Oh, it just happens to be a fucking stepsister video. Has nothing to do with like. It's any the power fetish. dynamic. It's the power dynamic. Yeah. It's the. It's how. It's. It's so fucked up. It's like, you obviously aren't the kind of person you've done in real life, but, like, it's popular. So therefore, more, more studios. I'm gonna put in quotes. Are putting out videos with that title so therefore more people will go to the videos because it's it's the popular thing mm-hmm. like backroom casting couch yes that's not we, casting <laughs> it's not, they're not actually <laughs> being casted they're not gonna be in the next hollywood picture <laughs> yeah um incest porn is what really it was a huge boon for for the porn writers of the world like the the really <laughs> ones who really put their work into it they're, they, they're like shit. We can do that. AJ comments. As much as I would lo- love to believe, or as much as I would like to believe that my brother would be a great lover, I don't like the idea of doing PCP. Yeah, it's a dirty drug. I will for how I will, however, yell to someone behind the dumpster about love. <laughs> <laughs> and says porn, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe not necessarily like the the brother fuck sister nine thousand. <laughs> like I'm a bi- I'm a big fan of the step whatever. Man. Step sibling, step parent. I like the step. Oh mom. fuck yeah, dude, dude. Yeah, and, and the thing is, when it, I remember being a teenager and in a video like pop up, I'm like, oh gross, you know. And then, you know, one day I'm just like, I'm kind of bored of regular porn, you know. I'm like, what, what's going on here? And then I was like, hmm, that's a really compelling plot they got going. I'm a big fan of the parody porn too. Mm, I like to believe it. It's it's. <laughs> I was talking with Brandon Stone about this the other day. About parody porn? <laughs> no, about just like what he's saying. Like you get bored. And, and you that. escalate. <laughs> and you escalate. He's like, yeah, you know. It's like that. I've seen – because he – we were talking – because someone sent him some plane fetish shit. Like where s- somewhere on the internet, people have drawn planes. Like, you know, like fucking – Like 747? Yeah, like no, it, fucking raptors and 
uh, I'm drawing a blank on other names. Boeing's fucking B-52s. All of them, like, and, like, just fucking each other. Like, they gave them tits and dicks, and the planes are fucking each other. <laughs> and it's the weirdest shit. And, like, that's just spawned a conversation with Brandon and I. And he's like, yeah, you know, sometimes it's like you just – you've seen it all, and then you find something new, and you're like, what the fuck is this? I don't – okay, I think I'm into that now. <laughs> you ever just try to find something that doesn't have porn you just, of it? You get a Zenkai boost in your porn addiction. <laughs> I remember one time <clears> – <throat> When I was in high school, I was at James Curry's grandma's house, and we were watching porn at fucking like one thirty in the morning on a fucking dial-up computer. Ah, oh, good times, <laughs> the hard times. Days. Yeah. But we were scrolling, we were scrolling through like the fucking like popular videos, <clears throat> and I remember the fucking headline: "Girl fucks fish on a stick." So we fucking we loaded this video up. You know, it took like twenty five minutes. It was literally a girl with like a fucking bluegill on a wooden stick, just fucking. Hey, not false advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> I but mean, like, what'd you expect? Like all the <laughs> fucked up shit that I've watched, it's like, man, people are letting horses fuck them. Alex Taylor That's says, "Weird man, porn has desensitized us. Can't get off unless someone shoves a toy at, toy tractor up your ass and steps on your cubes." <laughs> what are your cubes? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Dude, I understand him 120. <laughs> percent Yeah, I, I remember. I, so I remember in high school, like I had LimeWire, and I would just go. I would change category to adult and just search, you or I just search tits. <laughs> this is the most basic, like tits, tits, man. <laughs> oh, she meant balls, not cubes. <laughs> I like that's what all the kids are calling it this funny. day, though. Yeah, I like cubes. Mine cubes. Are shaped like cubes. My cubes. <laughs> uh. You kicked me right in the cubes. Yeah, remember uh, the days of searching porn and just trusting the title? Remember that? <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, that's a well-written title. Sounds like a person spoke English who wrote it. Well, I'm going to try that. I, see, I got so good with LimeWire that like, I would be like, nope, that's a virus. You, all you have to do is look at the, the file size. Oh, two kilobytes, huh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, oh, 58 megabytes? All right, this is legit. This is some high quality shit. Dude, this my, is my, this is 244p. Dude, my downloads now are like five gigs, dude. We've come so far. Like I got like 2160p. You know, like I, I'm so we're so spoiled. There's never been a point in human history where anyone gets to see anyone they want to see having sex. Like they can see someone that attractive having sex. Whatever you want, you can find it. That's never they existed have 3D. before. Now. They have like, they have fucking the POVR porn VR, which is not great. Uh, I don't like to be able to look around the, the room. I like to act like I'm sitting in a theater jerking <laughs> off. <It's, laughs> I loved my VR headset. <laughs> I briefly tried it out like maybe a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And like just this, this like it's so sensitive to your head moving that it's just. Wait, you, which you one? Can, huh? The PO. <clears throat> What? Oh, so like any slight move, any it slight did. move you make, I got it. It took you a long time. It did, it time. did. But any slight movement to your head and you're like, it's just shaking constantly. It's totally unrealistic. I didn't have that problem, but I did not <laughs> you like. You don't do this while you're fucking. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> fucking Doris. Ah! So we had a co we had a coworker Tyler remembers her they oh, yeah. they left they left SIA at the, or he left SIA at the same time she got moved Blaine fucked her <sighs> no I did not she was an old fucking lady and I was I was in her a, body oh, was I was like a happily in a relationship <laughs> pink in color <laughs> I was happily in a relationship whom I'm married to now so fuck you you fucking damn angry fuck her you she was she was a miserable old cunt. Yeah. But no, she, so she, I'm pretty sure she had, um, not Parkinson's. What's the other one? Um, Parkinson's is the one that you're thinking of. No, I'm thinking dementia, of dementia, Alzheimer's. No, where you fucking shout out, like it's mostly Tourette's. 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 She had, she, I'm pretty sure she had Tourette's, which is, it's just involuntary movements of shit. Oh, ticks. Yeah, involuntary ticks. Yeah. And her tick was, she would just, and like someone actually asked her one day, like, what are you saying no to? <laughs> Do you remember that? I can't remember who asked her, but... Pretty sure it was Cameron. No, it wasn't Cameron. We it was like Donovan that. or somebody. We somebody like, like offline. 
What's the guy that I don't huh? like from like PVC? Yeah, Brittany. Yeah. Yep. What's the guy that I don't like from PVC? Tim. Yeah, it was him. Oh, yeah. He. She was just like like she would just be working, and you just hear. <laughs> just. What are you saying no to? <laughs> what are you saying no to? She bro? just reliving the same memory of somebody asking her if she wants to donate to charity at McDonald's. <laughs> no, no, just give me my fucking food. You give me my quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> That's not staying empty. <laughs> Oh, so, Tyler, oh, you wanted to talk about something. Sonic the fucking yeah. Hedgehog. Let's, let's hear this. We I did it. Go we Reddit. shamed a fucking movie studio into fixing an awful fucking rendition of a classic character. We did it. Can we when shame... that ever happened? Never. No, Can we never. shame the movie studio that did Dragon Ball Evolution and just erasing that? No. because I can't erase it from our minds. I forgot about it right. now, so you just recreated it. Yeah, what a fuck. I've yeah. only I've only, I never watched the actual movie. I've only watched like the Riff Tracks version from Team Four Star. I pirated it. So I it was at least a little funny because they were like making fun of the shitty ass movie the whole time and I'm like, this is bearable. <laughs> I pirated it. I watched the first ten minutes and as soon as <clears throat> it was garbage. Was like, Grandpa Gohan, teach me how to get girls. I was like, get the fuck out of here. I'm not watching this anymore. Grandpa Gohan. And then I was also very disappointed with the last Airbender movie. Yeah. It was awful. I liked it when I first saw it, but I also at the at that time I had much worse movie taste than I do now. Yes. Which is still not <laughs> Matt's great. like, yes. I what it, okay, the thing is though, is like you know Song of Hedgehog is gonna make so much money now. Now the the irony of it is just yeah. going to I'm already slated to go there because uh I'm gonna be coming off yet because East Side Ten serves liquor and beer now, so I'm gonna you can go only there. order one at a time. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna rack them up on that. I'm gonna be like, okay, go get another one. Pretty sure you can only have two. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to fucking take the wind out of your sails, my man. I but. have no. I have no recollection of any of these limits. Well, I also don't like their selection, so I don't get anything there. I don't like to get beer at the movie theater. <clears throat> How much are they? Like twenty dollars a piece? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's what, another reason I'm probably not getting it. Well, I was going to get fucked up and watch Sonic. But, the best um, thing they have there is Angry Orchard, and I don't want that. The best thing they have there that. is popcorn. They don't have Blue Moon? They might have Blue Moon, but I don't want it unless it's draft, and they have it on bottle. I don't fucking drink Blue Moon anyway. I want to go see I'm Sonic over it now. Popcorn. Remember how it used to be? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm willing to settle for Blue Moon. I will. Yeah. It's my, there's nothing else, okay. I'll take a Blue Moon. And bring me some orange juice, please. I drink please. Jim Bean and cola. That's what I do. Fucking cola! <laughs> Give me some of that Dr. K like cola! Damn, Give me some of that RC! I, RC's I, my I was, favorite. Don't you dare fucking... No, I get it. It's a, it's a can already pre-made and mixed. Yeah. It's, hmm. now. it's pretty sweet. Cola. That literally just says cola. <laughs> I was it, having it this... It's fantastic. like that old beer that just said beer. It's a white can. It said beer. I want so to know it's a it white can. Like. It says nice. Jim B. <laughs> yeah, anytime I hear that soda versus pop debate... I drop a cola on them. It's not what I actually call it, but I say I do. If, if you're from Georgia or any of those southern states, it's Coke. It's all yeah, Coke. Yeah, always Coke. And it's different flavors of Coke. Like, hey, give me a Coke. Which one do you want? I'll give me Mountain Dew. I, I would I, If I go to the south, I'm going to say, that's not Coke. That isn't even a Coke product. That's Pepsi, stupid. <laughs> you <laughs> idiot. You'd be butt-fucked to death by the dumpster area in a matter of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you talk about Ted Turner too, motherfucker? <laughs> How about Medea? How about Medea? <laughs> yeah, I bet you gay, liberal, you love this. You know what I mean? <laughs> so overall, what do you what do you think of this new Sonic movie? Well, it's got Jim Carrey, which I'm uh, for. I'm not. I, I I'm just 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 hear me out. Okay, let's hear it. I'll hear you. Like I'll the, witness you. The guy, the guy had a career, yeah, which was incredibly lucrative. He. Some people say went off the deep end. Other people say that he went on a fucking spiritual journey of awakening and he's tired of our species and doesn't like people now, which is totally okay. He's ascended. He's ascended. Um, and he said he was never going to make another movie. He <clears> said that two years ago. I will not be in any major motion picture ever again. I don't remember that. I do. I watched this episode of um, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Mm -hmm. I think it's the spiritual journey thing. It seems like he's doing good. But, like, I don't... How is that, by the way? I haven't, I haven't watched it. Um, I have to be in the right mood, but when I'm in the right mood, I love it. It's just... 
you know, it's it's a it's it's exactly what it is. It's like watching a podcast, basically. You know, cool. Yeah, you, you know, I wish I could just listen to it while I drive, but you know, Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Hmm. <laughs> but like, he he is literally the only reason that I want to see this movie. Okay. And I don't like. It's a weird duality where I had come to terms with I wasn't going to see the Jim Carrey of old anymore. And now he's fucking playing Dr. Robotnik. Well, I know that he spends like all his free time in a massive art studio and he is a kick ass artist. Mm -hmm. And most artists are really emotionally like they they got a lot going on. You know that he, um, okay. Like I'm going to give the cliff notes because I don't remember the details and I don't want to get anything wrong, but he broke up with a girl and then she killed herself. And if you can just imagine like what, you know, even a stone hearted person, that's still got to be so much to deal with. I don't, he's just always been kind of, he's a crazy guy. I mean, mm-hmm. but I love the dude. I, 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 when, when the comedians of cars getting coffee episode, you see that genuineness. He goes into restaurants and acts a fucking fool and stands up on tables and he's not really doing it for attention. He's doing it because he just does whatever the fuck he wants all the time. And I'm just like, dude, it's like, um, oh, kind of like Tom Cruise, you know? Tom Cruise is lovable in his without, own way. Without the Scientology. Just as crazy. But I, I, I love people like that. I, I love people who are just being themselves 24-7. It's been a long time since I've heard anything about Tom Cruise outside of, like, oh, he's starring in this movie. Like His teeth are misaligned, and his one of his teeth is in the middle of his face. I tried to explain this to Blaine one day, and he was like, huh? Yeah, like, if you take a line down his face, that's all I can think about now. So everyone's face is not symmetrical. So if you do, like, a 3D recreation of your face... Like what you like if you look in a mirror, your face is all like everything is proportional with each other. Like you'll notice like one of your ears might be a little bit lower than the other. I'm blacking your nose, out right now. Your nose I might, don't understand. Your nose might be slightly <laughs> crooked. But his like imagine his face, his fucking teeth are over here. Like his fucking jaw is rotated like twenty degrees. He's a Picasso. Queen. Where where the fucking gap in his two front teeth is actually perfectly in the center of his fucking face. Not the gap. Yeah, the one of his teeth. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. gap's off center. Yeah. Yeah. So really, it's is tooth just you can take a line down the middle of it, and it, it it's not like just a little bit in the center. No, it literally bisects yeah, the tooth. Yeah, it's dead center. Mm-hmm. He looks really fat in these pictures. Dude, have you ever uh, taken a photo of your face, crop it in half, and then look at like, and you? Flip it, <laughs> and it's two different faces. I Google, I Google Tom Cruise face, and it literally pulls up. You will never unsee this. Tom Cruise has a tooth at the exact center of his face. <laughs> yeah, you. It's like yeah, you can't unsee it. Mm-hmm. Like it, that's insane. Jim Carrey. Um, you never fully elaborated why you didn't well, I came in the movie because it's that's the only reason that you yeah because it? it's just I mean I love Jim Carrey, but at the same time like. I've gone back and rewatched a lot of the stuff from our youth, and it's not funny. And like what? Like liar, liar, not fucking funny at all. Sounds like Adam Sandler. He's except Adam Sandler movies are still funny. Yeah, that, that like I'm, Happy I'm Gilmore you. and fucking Billy Madison. You can't are funny. tell Billy Bunker. Madison is funny. They're fucking funny. It's hilarious. It's so silly. You got. I agree like... with Happy Gilmore, but Billy Madison is annoying. I think it's fucking hilarious. Big Daddy, incredible. I, but I'm still hung up on, you don't think old Jim Carrey movies are funny? Dude, I just watched Ace Ventura the other day. Not funny at all. Fucking hilarious. I love, I, I mean, I, I've watched it in recent, I've watched at least uh, When Nature Calls in recent years. and I Both just, great. I just fucking laughed. I didn't like them when I was a kid. Don't like them now. Oh, I did. Don't think they're funny. <laughs> um, what about the old Grinch movie? I love, I love, I fuck with the Grinch real hard because okay. I am the Grinch. We can tell. True story. Yeah, Mister, I hate everything good that's that's on film. What do you think about his serious work? <laughs> Love it. Okay. Like fucking Eternal Sunshine say, of the Spotless Mind. Fucking five out of five. The movie they the, leave out of that one that I think they should. The number twenty three. Majestic. Yeah, that's a good. The one. Majestic's pretty good. But normally when people talk about like his best movies, they talk about Eternal Sunshine or The Truman Show. Those movies are so much better than Number Twenty Three. They are. I like them all. Dude. Number twenty three <laughs> is pretty good. Though. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you love Jim Carrey, you can get into these movies. I think. But if you only like him, 
then it's a judgment call. Like I think that yeah. anything he makes, I'm just going to love because I love the guy. What did you guys think of Kick-Ass, his role in Kick-Ass 2? Never watched it. Same. Heard he's going to suck ass. Kick-Ass uh, 2 was good. I didn't watch the first one. The well, first one was good. Let me rephrase They're that. They're both really good. Let me rephrase that. I tried to watch the first one. It was awful, so I quit watching it. Dude. I, I got bored Triggered. with the first one. Here's <laughs> another one. You know what? Another movie that I fucking hate because I think it's awful. Stop. Scott Pilgrim. I knew it. It's okay. It's I, fucking awful. It's, okay. it's amazing. It's awful. I liked it. <laughs> what? Ducks, bro. <laughs> I, I like Scott Pilgrim, but I, I mean, it's not for everyone. I get that. It's fucking awful. Michael Sarah's awful. I just, dude, the worst movie I've ever seen is probably, uh, what's that? American Sniper. That is I liked the American dumbest Sniper. fucking movie I've ever seen in my life. I liked life. American why? Sniper. Yes, I got him. <laughs> no, yes. no, no, you didn't get me. I just want to know why. Well, it sounded like an argumentative why. Like, no, why? it's just why. What'd you think of it? I loved it. I hated it. I loved it because of Bradley Cooper. I hated it because that plastic baby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> I, uh, you make a you make a very valid point. I'm partially deaf, so I sometimes scream. It's sorry. That's okay. <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> Um, that movie now. was okay. Hmm? Said so you're an electrician now. Get used to it. You're gonna be more deaf. Out of respect for your status as an actual electrician, I have to clarify. I'm a helper to non-electricians. Are yes, you I'm a material what. handler? Is that what you are? No, I am doing absolutely everything that everyone else does. More so, actually, to be honest. So you're just an un- unindentured apprentice, basically. Exactly. My interviews okay. in a week. So. Well, good. You'll do fine. Thank you. Uh, they only take five a year, and so it's, I'm probably gonna miss out to five. Wait, they only take five? Yep. We take almost 20 a year. Mm -hmm. They are extremely restrictive. Uh, I um, hope your first year apprenticeship is a better experience than mine has been because mine has been um, that I would never recommend anyone go through the teaching that I went through this year because it's awful. uh, I'll tell you what, 855, I am nothing but impressed with this local. That's Uh, good. uh, They're only about 150 strong. Which I like small locals more than any, and um, ours is pretty big. Yeah, because they have time to take shit seriously because they all know each other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the best friends I have is my journeyman. That's cool. Yeah, the very first person I met in this job is already like I'm. I, I've never been happier with it with it with any job I've ever had. So things are going great. My foreman and my journeyman are the same dude, so I feel the same way. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for that guy, I would have fucking quit already because my. Uh, I took, okay, so I took my last uh, academic test of the year yesterday, test on electrical code. Mm. Got your uglies? We spent, well, yeah, but we can't use it. Mm. We had two days, two class periods where we spent 45 minutes, and then we took the fucking test. There is at least six people that Pat would, that that test decided if they passed or failed. I got a 92, but... Good job. Thank you. I know you're um, really... Totally worried. bullshitted my way through it. I know you're worried about it. Yeah. I you know. fucking bullshitted my way through it. Is it one of those ones that's like really semantic to where it's like, is code say 30 inches, 31 inches? 30? Yeah. Well, oh. and it's, it's article. You have to go by the article. So is it article 90, article 90.5, article 100, fucking appendix B, <clears throat> section 2? I mean, it's... Thank God for Adderall prescription, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I need some. I could never do this. Yeah, it's fucking awful. But it's because my teacher was incompetent. Because she didn't actually teach us anything. The, uh, I took, my, when I took the, you, you guys don't have an um, entry test anymore, do you? The first time that, the first time that I got accepted in the apprenticeship, I did take that test. The second time that I, well, now that I'm in, uh, I was chosen as an alternate. So... Uh, I was, so 2013, I would have been 21 years old, had mild construction experience, took the entry exam, interviewed, got accepted, turned it down, and then now that I was 26 when I applied, um, no entry exam now, did the interviews, I've done group interviews now, so I was totally prepared for that. Had five years of manufacturing experience working with PLC and all kinds of the sh- stuff that we do as electricians. And I was chosen as an alternate because someone failed a drug test. Oh, in is in. Right. We. Why? This is. This is. <laughs> Why? 
So get this, their entry exam, um, they don't have a pass or fail uh, score. They okay. have a take everyone's results, average them, and then decide the pass or fail. So no matter what, you could get a 99, but if everyone else got 100, bye. You don't even get considered. Wow. They're, they're brutal, but it's, it, I like it. It feels competitive. Mm-hmm. I'm actually um, interviewing against uh, the guy who's <laughs> – the guy, my foreman's son – is interviewing against me, really. I mean, we're interviewing at the same time. He's a CE. And his... Wait, he's a CE? Mm-hmm. Why would he, why would he want to take a pay cut? There is... This local is a little different, um, as far as I can tell. CEs are basically... And from what I understand, it's... Because they're so selective with the apprenticeship, you go to CE for a year, generally. It's uncommon to go directly to the apprenticeship... But that's what I'm gunning for, and I think I have a pretty good shot. But Are my you sure he's not a CW? No, there's no CWs in this. Okay. A55 is only CEs and apprentices and journeymen. Okay. Because a CE can become a journeyman with fucking 12,000 hours of time accrued. I They reach level five, and that's the cap for CEs in this one. Um, and they're allowed to buy their way into classes. They can pay to take classes. Hmm. Yeah, it's so, you know, I, I, I don't it's know. It's totally different. That's weird. I know. And uh, CE is what I'll probably be p- promoted to, but um, the pay is the same. The benefits are different. So um, That's how ours is, too. Yeah, and I, I might be getting a couple details wrong here, so you know, don't hold me to everything, but that's, that's pretty much how it works. The guy um, who was originally going to do my evaluations, it's an evaluation at the end of every month, his son is interviewing against me. So it's like, you know, thank God that the journeyman I was with intercepted me he was like no he's not your boss i'm your boss he's like he doesn't tell you what to do i tell you what to do he uh you know can lay you off and that's it but Mm -hmm. i'm the one to decide what you do right yeah so um he's been doing my evaluations and it was a it was a godsend because (sighs) well that's good yeah huge conflict of interest (laughs) i was worried about i mean if they only take five people and your kid is interviewing and you got another guy interviewing against him working for you it doesn't matter how how little your son does you're gonna fuck that guy right Back to Sonic. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I look yeah, over at sports. I, huh? I look over at <laughs> Matt and Blaine are both fist fucking their phones. I was watching. It, I was yeah. watching someone build a guitar out of Jawbreakers. Cool, uh, great story. And, yep. Um, yeah. So, I guess <laughs> let me rephrase my Jim Carrey comment. I'm pretty nonchalant about it. I don't really care. Hey, Clint Chase comments. Is Tyler the only person listening right now? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was the only one because Jack's my friend. And I appreciate him. Jack wasn't even listening. He was part of that conversation. <laughs> mm-hmm. When you think every, when you think everything is interesting, you know that's that's my curse. Mm-hmm. I'll talk about anything. I'll talk about dirt for an hour. Let's my, go. My curse is yeah. hating everything. Let's do it. Hmm. I don't like it. You so don't like dirt? No. Dirt is good. Dirt bad. We can't live without dirt. I can't live with it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't live with it. You can't live without it. Fucking dirt. Woo. But uh, no, I like. So I watched. I watched the Sonic trailer when it debuted, and I was immediately like, "It took me like a week to finally work up the courage to watch." No, it. I, I watched it the day that it dropped, and I was just pissed. Just pissed. Gotta Cause, go fast. Because I've watched Wreck It Ralph <laughs> probably seven hundred times in the last three weeks, and your uh, daughter, I get it, one or two, both. Lucky you. The first one is better than the second one. Much. Oh, my God. W- World's better. It I is. You offend me more wait, than wait anybody minute, I know. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Number one, you offend me just for existing. Number two. Clint says, oh, my God, don't start on dirt. <laughs> okay, so that final scene where Wreck-It Ralph is fighting Turbo to save fucking Vanellope Von Schweetz. You're, you te- know- you're telling me that's not better than any... Any scene in fucking the second Wreck-It Ralph? I I don't even remember that scene. Okay, honestly. you're gonna you. have to elaborate because that so, movie bored so, me. So they're in fucking uh, was, Sugar Rush. That was the scene where Sinbad came and took on Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, I loved him and Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> they're in uh, they're in Sugar Rush. The fucking bugs have taken over. Yeah. Fix it, Felix, and what the fucks her name that he fucks later on. Have given up on Vanellope Von Schweetz. She will be deleted when the game is unplugged. Because she can't leave the game. Because she can't leave the game. 
It's a big plot point. Ralph zooms off on a hoverboard to the top of a Mentos volcano. Over cola. Over cola. <laughs> and he starts fighting Turbo. But it's not just Turbo. It's Turbo Bug. He got fucking, um, what the fucking, Cybugs? Is that what they were yeah. called? Yeah, he got fucking th- eaten by a Cybug and became a fucking... I fucking love Wreck-It Ralph. Turbo Uber Mac. Cybug. I saw Wreck-It Ralph in theaters. Me too. And Wreck-It Ralph is just giving him all he wants. And then he fucking... They fly up into the air and he says, You know what? Not today, Cybug. Not today. And he fucking is plunging towards the Mentos Cola Volcano. And he does his Villains Anonymous. I'm bad and that is good. <laughs> And every time in my mind, I'm like, mm, don't cry, because I'm bad, <laughs> and it's good. This just in, it's illegal to marry a cousin in Utah unless one is over the age of childbearing years or 55, year, 55 years of age. So this family took a 15-passenger van to Colorado, one of 19 states where it's legal to marry a first cousin. That is that up. Must be, that must be new because uh, there was just a story <laughs> about this, this, these uh, cousins from Utah – who had to? They were on Doctor Phil. They went and got married in another state because it was a felony, and they were worried about getting in trouble and shit uh, after being on Doctor Phil. Like I, they, because they were from Utah, and went to Doctor. Hey, Phil. Jerry Lewis could do it. I think everybody should be allowed to do it. Fuck yeah, whatever, man. Fuck whoever you want. Fuck your parents. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, you got to keep Pornhub in business. Number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, uh, like I like I stated earlier when Matt and I were doing our little sports cast, I don't fucking care. What goes on in your personal life, unless you're abusing women or abusing men and abusing children. Other than that, I don't fucking care in abusing animals. Or if you're homosexual. I don't care about that. Oh, okay. I was just trying to pander. Are you trying to be a Republican? I was trying to pander. Okay. Um, I don't fucking care, man. Yeah. If you if, if we leave this room right now and you take every beer can that has been consumed today and you shove them in your ass... Like one yeah. after the other. That's my. Choice. You'll die. I don't care. <laughs> you underestimate his <laughs> power. I don't care. I have the high ground. He, I don't he care. In your cans crushing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care at all. It doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't fucking care. You're right. If you want to fuck your cousin, I don't care. I hope you do. <laughs> Get some happiness out of this miserable fucking world. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't care. God damn it! I fucking hate everything. Yeah, but the, the beauty <laughs> the beauty of the cynicism is just like it, it's just that makes the happy moments so much more enjoyable. Because ah oh, yes, one of the brief fleeting moments of joy so, I'll ever experience. A little a little backstory just just to to fill you in, fill you specifically in. So I was in a miserable place in life i was depressed which i still am fucking anxiety was an all-time high which thanks to my first year apprenticeship has went back to fucking 11 on the knob um and like i drove to work every day and i thought about hijacking a fertilizer truck and blowing the fucking place up not to take myself out of the equation but to make sure that no one else ever for the rest of fucking existence had to experience what i experienced at that place on a daily basis and I got out of that place. I went to fucking Subaru for a year. The job was miserable. But I got to spend that year with good fucking people. He's one of them. Sup. That's how I met him. And I thought he was a douchebag day one. Sup. Um <laughs> And I thought that, wow, I'm getting sleep now. So I went from three hours to eight to ten hours of sleep a day. I fucking started to lose a little bit of weight. You know, which I got extremely fat because I got three hours of sleep a day and I fucking ate Buffalo Wild Wings fucking four nights a week. Oh, it's awesome. God, it was, <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings is fucking awful. It's mildly okay. Cold chicken wings, excuse me, cold chicken nuggets with barely any sauce on them. And, you ask for extra sauce? And your bill is $70. I shouldn't have to ask for extra sauce. This is fucking America. Nothing's free. There should be a fucking fountain of sauce. Dude, that would be fucking sweet. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> yeah. I would bathe in a honey barbecue Their sauces fucking are really sauce. Good. Uh, imagine like a, a fondue fountain with like Asian zing and then another one with honey barbecue and just the fucking go stick a little toothpick Have in the Have you ever chicken. had the wilds? 
Oh, fuck. no, I'm not. Mm. It's not that hot. I used to work at Buffalo Wild Wings. I know you did. The fucking wild is incredible. You need to try it. Oh, no, I've had wild sauce. You okay. said the wilds. So I was like, that must be something new. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Like, <laughs> that was just Indiana coming Wild out. honey barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't come out very often, but when it does, it's strong. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I, I went on this, my own spiritual journey and became a pretty positive guy. I mean, would you say that in the year I was at Subaru, I was, I mean, other than my cries for help. Yeah, I, 11 I, a day. 11. I had 11 cries for help a day on average. Yeah. Uh, so obviously some of it include, please snap my neck. <laughs> uh, some include, he, you, were su- you were really subtle, and sometimes I had to really pick up on what you were saying and read between the lines. But I, I think out of everyone there, I was the one that noticed it the most. And, you know, I was there for you. You and Brandon, for sure. Um, but, uh, and then I left Subaru onto my, my fucking, one of the biggest accomplishments of my adult life, beating fucking 18 and 19 year olds out of a fucking coveted position. Cause I was the alternate. I was the best alternate. God, what a fucking participation trophy that is. Hey, you passed a drug test. And then, um, then I, then I thought, man, I'm going to learn some shit. I'm going to learn a craft. I like to build stuff. I like to do things. I can be mean again. I don't have to worry about people's feelings. Because in a manufacturing environment, you have to worry about people's feelings. It's really stupid. Number one reason I love being in the trades. I don't have to worry about people's feelings. I can say, you are a fucking idiot. And they're like, yeah, I'm probably a fucking idiot. So right now I'm a team leader. I've been team leading since You're January. You're a pseudo team leader. I'm a pseudo team leader. I've been doing it since January, and I'm really tired of it. But uh, I told we, you, you would be, and it, so we haven't. Uh, I've told you about John, the temporary. Yep. He doesn't understand just how much power I don't have, so I, I take it out on him a lot. Like he'll be like, "I need to go to the bathroom." I'll be like, "No, you don't," and I'll walk away. <laughs> be better. Other people, they're like, "I need to go to the bathroom." I'm like, "All right, here I am." <laughs> but him, no, you don't. <laughs> Fucking sweet. No, I, I kind of exercised my power today. Like I the, am your god. There's been there's been another temporary that does the, it, less less seniority than him, but is more aware of oh, her, I you were say of her own Jacob. rights. And so she was like, I need to go to the bathroom. And I saw I looked behind me and there was a gap and I was like, You're gonna have to wait until this gap comes and then I will take your spot. Dude, I am <laughs> loving this mental image of like some like little fucking baby faced kid just being like, I think I'm gonna shit my pants. And I just like picture getting an inch away from his face being like, so shit him. <laughs> <laughs> but so I was prior to me leaving that, that job, I was uh, like just cold, just a fucking cynic. Dude, I, it, I, I had no love in the world for anything. And then I, I went the total opposite. Like, Fucking just optimism out the fucking dick hole. <laughs> just nothing but optimism all the time. And now I'm yeah, like constant I'm, bebopping. Yep. And now I'm right I'm now I'm back in like this this teeter totter position where yeah. like like one day I'll be like really optimistic and then the next day the fucking teeter totter snaps in half and it's pointing straight up and down and I'm just cruel and fucking just fuck them all. Dude just, Balance. God. Do you think that's a product of the fact that we have so many options for trades and stuff these days, and so we just get we get really bored easily? I think I think back in the day, people were just I, I don't want to go ahead and say complacent, but more willing to stick with the same thing. Well, I have the tendency to get bored with what I'm doing, just in general, very fast. I always yeah. have. Um. And it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm bored with my job at all. I think more than anything, it now specifically, where I worked with no people that I enjoyed, and then I went to work with you, and I I loved everyone. I liked working with everyone except like two people. Yeah. And now I'm back to the point where I'm the only apprentice when I where I work, so I have to do everything. And that's fine. That's part of the job. I don't complain yeah, about it. You know your place. But I'm in a, a prefab um, shop, a prefab shop. So all the pipe that needs bent, I bend it all. And then anytime there's a project that comes up. What about all the pipe that needs laid? 
Yeah, I'm normally mm. that guy too. Not that I have a lot in the downstairs department, but I I do I I'm respectable. I, I do lay some pipe. I mean, I'm respectable. I mean, they <laughs> may or like we'll say a three out of ten satisfaction rate. I think that's reasonable. Um, I like how he. I'll give you just three miles of cock, but it's gonna take more thrusts. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> but like, I have uh, a perfectionist attitude. Or mindset at the same time of having a I don't fucking care mindset, you know, which is really hard to fucking it's a struggle. rein in. Yeah. Um, God, we, we have a, a fuck ton in common, dude. Yeah, it's like. Good for you. This has to be <laughs> fucking 15 feet. Just fucking get it up there, dude. Just mount, we ain't going to space. Just, <laughs> just <Fuck> you. <laughs> just fucking mount the box. But it's going to be perfect. Mm hmm. And like, so I I told I, I've told my foreman this a couple times that he's the only person I've ever worked for, other than Teresa, um, the only person that I've ever legitimately worked for that I've respected or had the ability to respect. My foreman is a carbon copy of me, except in his forties. Okay, imagine me in my forties. That's him. He fucking he's not a bully. But he calls people out on their bullshit. He likes to have a good time. He just wants to go to work and go home and be with his kids. You know? Yeah. And, like, the first six, eight months that I worked there, him and I didn't get into it at all. I mean, it was always kosher. Like, yep, I'll do it exactly the way that you say it. But now that I know how to do some shit, it's like, I do what you asked me to do, and it's not good enough. But I did it exactly the way that you told me, or... You gave me a task that I don't know how to fucking do, and now we butt heads a little bit, which is totally okay. Um, but I'm working with different people, like now, and I don't know how to do anything. Like I've been, I've been so sheltered with that one person. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to fucking do anything. I but really, I don't like to ask for help. I really I, hate when I get into a situation where I'm around people and they don't. And despite my seniority in this position uh, and knowing – and doing something for X amount of time, like – and not be, and that not being recognized. Matt, you, you recent – or in the last couple of years had something with this like where you, you went to a different Monocles after having not worked at Monocles for a while. And they were just hovering over you saying, hey, you're not doing this right or, hey, you need to do it this way or just basically making sure, right? Just undermining you. Uh, and you're just like, bro, they I did this even, for eight years. They wouldn't let me do certain things because they're yeah. like, oh, you don't know how to do it. It's like, buddy, I. It's, you're like, I've been a manager. I was a manager at this Monocles for X years. Yeah. And it, but it, I hate, like, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, why can't people just trust? I think, I think you and I went, I went through the same exact thing you do. And I'm still there, but um, I consider myself very happy and if you guys are interested i think i can tell you key to happiness if you want to know let's hear it lay it on us just like Tyler be Pipe. extremely cynical and <laughs> understand that th and gain some humility from it yeah. like when you let go of the fact that you're not unique you're not special the universe is empty you're going to die and nobody will care eventually they'll forget you and so this short time you have on Earth, fucking don't spend it doing anything you don't want to do. No regrets, bruh. No, no, no. Not like that. I'm not saying, like, oh, take that trip to Germany. Go on that. No, fuck all that. It's just saying, I'm like... I'm just talking about the We're the Millers tattoo. Yeah. No fucking regrets. I think so many people are so not even fucking <laughs> miserable. Like, and, and it was... I, I, like, how many people can you think of? Like, think about the common liberty, the whole snowflake idea. That is... Not that everyone has a snowflake complex in one way or another, and it's just like once you just accept that you're really not special or unique, it's it's makes it easier to not get so mad about stupid shit in life. It's like, why am I going to spend some of my precious seconds getting mad about this? Why am I going to, which I get angry every day. I'm a total fucking hypocrite, but <laughs> my life stabilized when I just started realizing, you know, I went through like here, this is where I'm going with this. I'll cut to the chase. I went through a suicidal period once. Everybody's, everybody has at one time or another been that sad. Oh, yeah. And I fucking – I was talking to one of my friends about it, 
And, um, you know, I just told him, I just, you know, I don't care. I don't want to participate in society. It fucking sucks. And he said, and I said, I think I'm going to end it all. And he's like, well, have you done heroin? <laughs> and I was like, no. He's like, well, if you're going to kill yourself, do heroin first. <laughs> I never did. But I was just like, there is always something to live for. I mean, if, you know, like, and I, dude, I'm telling you, this is the most effective anti fucking suicidal thought speech anyone's ever given. And I have, I've communicated it to other people like, what, you want to just never jack off again? You could jack off a few more times, right? You know, it's like, there will be more moments of joy. You you still, it, most of it's miserable. But you you got, get some fucking serotonin, my man. Yeah, just get to that <laughs> next moment of joy for a minute. You know, it's like, you'll eat some big fat ass greasy meal again. You know, it's like, why, why, why can't you just live to, to jack off? You know, it's like, is it really that, that moment you're coming alone, you're, your dirty tiny little apartment and you know it's like you got no friends and you're just like you're a miserable person but just think about it, like is it really so Honestly, horrible this is to... making me more suicidal <laughs> <laughs> well i i'm trying to ex relay the idea of like people expect too much from life i get you yes when you just stop yes. expecting so much you just start to appreciate how mundane stop expecting and... and just do it you know one thing one thing that i want like it's obviously unattainable but, like, I don't want to have to get in a vehicle and ever drive again. Because I fucking hate it. I hate it. I'm good at it. I can drive very well at very high speeds. I fucking hate it. Because no one else drives to the standard that I do, in my mind. And it fucking drives me insane. Well, that's the thing. You just gotta, you gotta get on the road with the, the thought that everyone is dumber than you. Right, which I, that, I have that, that. That's, But that's, that's true. That, that, no, that's, that's not just, like... You know what I would that's rather not just have, be, that, That's just not – that's not um, fucking road rage, like, speaking. That's, like, survivalism. Right. Right. If, if, you, if you expect that everyone is dumber than you, you will be a good driver. So in the short term, okay, think about how awful our species would be if we didn't have motorized travel overnight. <laughs> okay. But think about how incredible life would be. If you had to think, man, I gotta, I gotta fucking hitch the horse up and go to the fucking CVS to get my fucking menthols. <laughs> Menthol. <laughs> Sweet. I gotta get my fucking my Paul Malls. Wow. Like, yeah, it, I was meant for a simpler time. Cause I'm, I'm a beefy man that can lift heavy objects. I should not have the brain that I have. And it, it fucks with me all the time. And if we're walking down the street and you bump into me and I'm like, hey, man, excuse you. Fuck you, dude. I want to cut you in half with a sword. I wish guns were never invented because what? we'd still have swords. Yeah, but think about this. You can carry one. Oh, yeah, but it's not as cool anymore because you can die by a gun now. Yeah, but think about this. <laughs> think about this. If you and I have a dispute and we fucking sword fight, it's done. I would love that. It's done at the end. It I, is over with. I would love that. You're either going to beat me or I'm going to fucking beat you. Chivalry. Well, not fuck chivalry, but because there's no such thing as a fair fight. I'm going to throw fucking sand in your eyes. I'm going to fucking spit in your face. Okay, Braun. I'm going to fucking kick you in the balls. I'm going to butt fuck you to death. Like, <laughs> when at all costs, <laughs> cheat if necessary. Something is going to happen. Life's not fair. Fighting is not fair. Um, Just like Braun said, <laughs> you don't fight with honor. He did. He did. <laughs> but, uh, like... He used to be so cool. I still like him. I'm not Who caught up on now? season eight. I'm not caught up on season eight. Don't ruin it. Ooh, he's, he's fuck a, you. I was waiting to talk about how much that show sucks. I just fuck finished you. season seven last night. It fucking sucks. The writers have had nothing not. to fucking say since the since they ran out of book. It does you, not you're suck. You're getting tricked by shock value. No, and you're I won't not. spoil anything, but no, I'm telling you. Not. I've had it's people spoil spectacle. stuff for me, and it crushed me. I'm not going to spoil you. I'm going to tell, so tell you something. If I spoil it for you, you're going to stab me? No. Oh, it was a good guess, though. My favorite character on the show? Mm hmm Jorah Mormont. That's all I need to say. I like him a lot. He's really cool. He's an awesome character. Yeah. Um, I loved him in the books. And then uh, the show ran out of books, and I just... I, I, none of the characters feel the same anymore. When's the last time Tyrion said anything cool? Yeah, remember? He, he's been kind of lackluster. Season seven, and I'm I'm talking strictly from season seven, seven season seven back. 
nothing from season eight is affect. Is, yeah, I'm, season, I'm not gonna because I've had the same opinion. Realistically, the last time they are cool. they are going they are trying to finish the show that they are trying to finish the show and they're going okay throw fan service throw shock moments no logic necessary nothing needs to make sense it's fucking no the, retarded. the logic is there three more uh, three you, spinoff you, shows by the way you got it you got three ignore. spinoff shows confirmed. I'll, I'll take a dump in my hand and eat it before I watch one. You you got to ignore the fact that it's fan service. I mean, there's no, I mean there is fan service, but there's a lot of stuff that just makes sense. And I don't want like the Starbucks cup. <laughs> they digitally it's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, it in was peace. in real life. It's there. Rest in peace. The okay. Starbucks cup. I wish they would have just left it there as an Easter egg. How okay? <clears throat> Wait, I can't. Okay. <laughs> I have to stick to season seven here. Technically, I'm on episode eight of season one. Oh wow! So you're <laughs> well. You're, you're gonna love the show for a while. Good for you. I wish I was. Season five was awful. You're on. You're on the episode of season one, dude. Okay, it, it, starting with season Wait, seven, you've I was like eight or oh. You're on the episode yeah, of season one. Se- you you just finished seven. Are you not even slightly bothered by the fact that they are just fucking skipping most in, in huge moments of reaction and dialogue that characters should be having because yeah. they don't have time to cover it. Yeah. They, the, the writers are in panic mode. They're like, we cannot live. We cannot do this show service. We have to just fucking get through it. HBO said, do you need more episodes to explain? It's like, no, 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 no. No, Six HBO, is HBO said, we will give you our entire budget. And they're and, like, no, we got this. And they're failing. I wish, and they're I wish fucking they would do garbage. Not failing. You and I are having a post podcast discussion because I am not going to have time for that because I got to get up at four in the morning. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I wish but that game, you can watch yeah. Game of King Chair every Thursday. Or I watched to it, it for a minute, but it was too positive, and I was just like, <laughs> "Fuck this!" No, I, listen I, to I, it. I, seriously, just hard. listen to it. I just wish they would do that with The Walking Dead. Yeah, Walking, Walking Dead. Dead needed to end. It'll die. Yeah, not um, soon enough. But I, I, I'm glad that Game of Thrones is not doing what Walking Dead is doing. That's all I gotta say. Continuing on. Yeah, I'm glad the story's <laughs> ending, but fuck, they are fucking it up. They, they're no, okay. they are not. They could have found exactly be- what dude, they need all they to needed to go is to the nearest comment section on any Game of Thrones subreddit, and they would have found a better plot than what they're doing now. It is. I like what so, they're doing now, dude. There's only really one like interesting it. thing about it, and it's like the thing that that we're like, oh, what's gonna happen? That's it. <laughs> Nothing I like makes how sense. Va- I like how extremely vague you are, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. No, I think I think what they're gonna. I mean, George R. R. Martin, uh, Mr. Railroad Martin said he he told them who is gonna end up on the throne, and then the 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 showrunners have told fans this ending is not gonna be a happy ending. It's gonna be a bittersweet ending. Yeah. Um. I, we all know what's gonna happen. I mean, it's. Okay. Do you know what's going to happen? Just to see how big I can be. That thing that happened in the last episode that we were like, oh, fucking what? What? Impossible. possible. If you read the book uh, Fire and Blood, the it's it's the Targaryen book. It's all about the Targaryen reign. Okay, remember how the books also said that dragons can only be killed by being shot through the eye? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember know when – well, what did the Night King do? He threw one right through the side of a dragon. Remember hmm. remember when uh, fucking um, – fucking Kyburn took Cersei down into the fucking – the dungeons and fucking shot the scorpion through the dragon's eye? And they've improved the dragon – the scorpion. Right, but I'm not talking about that. Like that's why he shot the motherfucker in the eye because that's the only way you can kill it. Well, uh, the Night King didn't have to throw it through a uh, dragon's eye. He's also magical. But, but yes, yeah, so, so we agree. <laughs> he had a magical eye that, That's how the scorpions work. Okay. That makes so, sense to me. Um, <laughs> Magic beats dragon. The only moments everything. of the show that you're seeing that you're like, oh, this, is, this was good, are the moments on the fucking outline no. that George R. R. Martin decided for them. They cannot write to save their fucking life. I think they're writing good. Well, well is the correct. I know. Garbage. I'm from Delphi. <laughs> we don't read good. And those they learned us math Star Wars, well, though. By the way. <laughs> doing Star, Wars. Star Wars movies. They can't make it worse. I mean, as long as Kathleen Kennedy's involved, they can. But <laughs> dude, the, um, the, the last Star Wars was such a zero for me that well, that's Solo okay. or that's Last Jedi. Fair. 
Oh, I didn't watch Solo. I gave watch Solo. Series. Solo's decent. It's good. Man. If it's not as good as Rogue One, I don't care. Because Rogue One was pretty good. It's and not as good as Rogue One, but it's better than Last Jedi. It's better than Attack of the Clones. I like The Last Jedi. I like The Last Jedi as well, but Solo was better. The best part in The Last Jedi is when the fucking fight in the Red Room. That yes. That's the best part in the movie. Absolutely. Everything else. Is yeah, crazy. but um, remember that part where they could have easily killed Rey and they just were like, oh, oh. Remember that? Where they're in the middle of the fight and it pulls the dagger back like you can stab her in the back and goes, oh. It, that's a tiny detail we get hung up on, but the rest of the movie was just like, oh, I guess the fucking the, the ship appearing out of nowhere and hitting, that was, that was fucking dope. Mm-hmm. But other than that. Oh, yeah, the, the fucking light speed battering ram. Oh, that was so fucking dope. It was the coolest. Yeah, I remember it, it was just all silent. It was so fucking cool. I, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But back to Game of Thrones, um, which I guess I can't really elaborate too much on. I love what they're doing, also and I think, th- I think they're going to do it justice. <laughs> just so you know, I'm so invested in the show, I have to keep watching. And yes, There's only I'm two watching, episodes left. I mean, if you quit now, you're just... I get the adrenaline you're rush while I'm watching. I'm compelled. I'm eating the popcorn. I'm fucking loving it. But the thing is, is afterward. It, they are hitting you with so much so fast, you don't have time to think about how stupid it is. That's why it's so enjoyable. And then you go to the next episode, and they hit you with so much, like, whoa, 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 oh, my fuck, this is crazy, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then after the episode, you're like, wait a minute. Look, Jack, try having a podcast about it where you actually have to analyze this shit and then, and then theorize as a fan. Dude, I will come I'm on still that. enjoying it after fucking analyzing I'm enjoying every it little too, thing about it. But I will not say the writing is good. I will, I will say that they are entertaining me, but they are not impressing me, I guess I could say. If you start theorizing about what's going to happen, they are impressing you because the, they're 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 showing what could be, but then they're going left of that or right of that, whatever. I mean, I I have a theory about what's going to happen next episode, and me it, too. I mean, there's only two episodes, and we know we know certain things that have to happen, and I'm saying the one you're wondering next episode for sure. Well, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but it, I bet it, I it involves a callback to. Egg on the Conqueror. Yep. I got you. And Heron Hall. Yep. I'm right there oh, with you, buddy. Awesome. Yeah. I would say I, I'm 95% certain. 5% because I'm too much of a dumbass to be 90, 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get you. I, I'm, I'll, hum, I'll be humble about it, but I'm positive. <laughs> I'm a positive idiot. But I could be wrong because I'm stupid. Yeet. Yeet. I just want to be caught up. Yeah. Yeah, get caught up, dude. Because well, I'm, I'm, he's I'm you're such there. a fucking stone cold he's, cynic. Like I can't wait. He's almost wait there. He can, he can probably be caught up by next episode. He yeah, can easily yeah, be no, I'll be caught up by Sunday for sure. Good. I would, yeah. be, I would have been I, caught up tonight, but I, I had to do a podcast. I will say this: as long as they uh, do the ending, GRM laid out for him, I believe that I will. Like they say, it won't be happy. It won't be this. It's gonna be bittersweet. It's like I'll, as long as I'm satisfied. Yeah, I won't be angry about the last two seasons they gave us uh, six solid seasons i was talking with brandon stone today about possibilities uh and i said and he's he's like it the ending of the entire show leaked and people are fucking furious but they didn't like the thing and i was like did you look he's like yeah i went but it didn't say what it was and i was like dude stop you're 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 we're not going to make it. They're, you're we're you're going down the rabbit hole, man. You don't want to spoil it for yourself. He's like, no, I don't want to spoil it for myself. I was like, but no, you're addicted. You want that. You want that fix of what's going to happen. And he, I was like, stop while you're ahead, <laughs> Brandon. But no, he's he's like – he starts ex- – I, I was like, I can only think of like one or two scenarios where I would actually be like, wow, this fucking series ended so terribly. Otherwise – Despite how much I hate the ending or hate what happens, I will agree with it. You find out it was all Rick in a coma. <laughs> if I if straight up if they if they do a Sopranos ending, I'll be pissed. No, that, Another that, great HBO show. No, there's no way they, won't. they would have. Oh, the I balls know. to do that. But again. if they did it, because the Sopranos is HBO as well, right? George R. R. Martin yeah, they is a huge fan up. of the Sopranos. So what about a Breaking Bad style ending where fucking no one wins? I'd be happy with that. At all. I'd be happy with that. I thought the ending of Breaking Bad was stupid. I love Breaking the Bad was Breaking stupid Bad. show. Breaking no, it was I mean, one of the best shows ever made. You didn't even watch it, so you don't even it know. It was one of the best shows ever made with a mediocre ending. It was so fucking awful. They, 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 they
No, because I don't. <laughs> what are some of your favorite shows? Like favorite shows of all time? Yeah. What do you think is the best written, most compelling dramas or, or whatever you've ever seen? Mm, that's tough. Just name one of your favorites. Spartacus. Bad. Terrible. How? I don't know. I've never seen it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Jericho was a good one. Oh. <laughs> okay. Hold no. I'm, I'm on Strike both, one. <laughs> I'm on one both sides. Of was good. Oh yeah, season two was. Eh. There's a lot of shows um, that great first one. Season. Let me talk about Jericho for a second. One, love the show. Two, terrible acting. I'll give it seven. There is a character on there, and his his main shtick is, this is my dad's farm. I'm a farmer, and I'm gonna run this farm. And a ranger. That's his shtick. He is that he's like this is my farm, <laughs> and he lets you know it every chance he gets. I'm a farmer. <laughs> oh, it's like a meme. Like he just has. They, they uh, write it. However, in. it had uh, the black dude that's also in Walking Dead and Snatch and Lockstock and dude, fucking all that. I, yeah, uh, I, I think I know who you're talking about. But yeah, he's he's Morgan on on Walking Dead. Sopranos. Oh, he was great. is. Um, Sopranos. Okay, okay, okay. The first two seasons of Falling Skies were good. And after that, it was awful. Um, I mean, name name Shield was good. Okay, okay. Rescue Me was good. Okay. Nip Tuck, Nip Tuck was good for about three seasons. Okay. All right. All right. Dex, I, Dexter was good for five seasons. Someone argue four. I'm being. Generous. I would be three at most. I'm being four I'm was being, amazing. I'm being very generous here. Yeah. Season okay, four all right. Was really your, your taste is solid. I give you a solid rating. I don't see how I, it's okay. Or it teaches their own. You guys solid enough taste where it's like it just must be preference. I don't think Breaking Bad sucks though. I think it's amazing. He just really, he just hates person. Brian Cranston. Well, that's part of it. Brian Cranston is, is such a fucking show, dick sucker. That show is the reason why I hate Brian Cranston though. It's the only reason I ever liked him. Yeah, I mean, honestly. Same. And then after the show, he became such an insufferable fucking. Remember me in Breaking Bad? Oh my fucking god, he sucks. I really what hated him and Malcolm in the middle. Fucking Malcolm in the middle. I hated him and Malcolm in the middle. Uh, such I, a pussy. I, I'm not such a big fan show. of Brian Cranston outside of Breaking Bad and a couple other movies. Remember in Godzilla when they uh, made the whole entire thing like, <laughs> hey, we Cranston talked about it. this last week. Fucking gets <laughs> killed immediately. <laughs> You're like, oh, well, that's a bait and switch. Yeah, he was he was a giant red herring. Front, oh, so uh, you were talking about uh, the internet theory stuff, and I'm not going on theory here, but I have decided that no, the the no. The most brilliant writer in the world is not going to be able to um, predict, outsmart the internet. They're always no. going to figure out where. Like, yeah, I was reading right. this thing about like how great plot twists have to make sense after you go back over the facts. You're like, oh, I didn't see that coming, but it makes sense now because of all these little details. Mm -hmm. Game of Thrones is just saying, "Look what happened," and you're like, I, "There was no way I could have anticipated that. It was entirely shocking." That's. That's kind of, they have no cause, just effect, and we're mistaking that for great writing. I didn't see that coming. It's because they didn't, they didn't have any fucking seconds of showtime dedicated to that possible plot line. But away from Game of Thrones, um, the I'm not going to read internet forums or comment sections about any show that I'm interested in ever again because people will always figure out what's going to happen. Yeah, people figured out fuck, the fucking. Um, you finished season seven. Season seven. They figured out the Jon Snow thing after season one of, of Game of Thrones. Really? I've known since season one, and I didn't even know who he was. I just remember reading about it. Yeah, the R plus L equals J theory. Season one, people had that figured out. So, if I really want to enjoy a show and actually be surprised by it, I cannot leave the comment sections. They figured out everything with Game of Thrones so far. I didn't know which theory was going to be true, but I always everything that's happened in the show. I was like, oh, I remember seeing that. Except this season, because they're not doing anything that makes fucking sense. But We'll talk about that another time. Watch, watch this set. The, watch this coming episode of Game of King Chair. I will, and because uh, I'm going to go over what I think is going to happen, and I think it's going to be fair. It's going to be awful. Well, uh, I think I'll it's going to be really accurate. I'll watch accurate. after the. Eh, I, I kind of want to watch after finale because, like I just said, like <laughs> I want to be surprised again. I don't want to find out you're right because I'm like, damn it. <laughs> I got I got spoiled about the major spoiler for me for episode three. Oh. When I was just. I was reading something about his house or about like major houses in Westeros 
and I was just like casually reading, and there was no warning whatsoever. Like total, uh, all the shit that I was reading was totally irrelevant to anything that happened in that episode. What character are you talking about? Jorah. Oh, okay, dude. I had to look away because I was worried you're gonna read out my face. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was pissed. Well, um, because okay. it was totally. Uh, you no will be. Warning you whatsoever. will be satisfied. That's all I'm gonna. That's say. what he said. Yeah, you'll be satisfied with his ending. All Absolutely. stories have to have an ending. His his story ends. Jorah's writing was solid till the very end. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Him and Braun are the only two that I give a shit about. Fuck Braun. Why though? His character here. Here's a I little, can't talk about it. I like little, Braun, but here's where a little, he's at is whatever. Here's a little fun fact for Braun. Um, did you know that him and Lena Headey yep. used to <laughs> fuck back in the day? Well, they're and that's divorced. Why, what? They were married, weren't yeah. they? They yeah. hate each other. Yeah, yeah they that's hate why each they're other. never on screen at the same time. They're never on. They're no, never they on screen. They have never been. They have never. Been. I, I like, thought so. Really? So episode seven of season seven, when him and Pod leave, and then Cersei shows up. Like she shows up immediately after he leaves. They will not be on screen at the same time. Whoa. That is there's petty like, shit. There's like two. You must have kicked her ass. There's or like something. there's like two episodes in all seven seasons. That they're on screen at the same time. <laughs> is it legit on screen too? Like, like not very, CGI? very short. Wow. Wow. Man, I can't imagine hating somebody that much. I can't be like, And I think it's her hating him, not him hating her. She seems like she's probably a cunt in real life too. So. Yeah, she is a cunt in real life. Yeah. That's that look on her face. Nobody can scowl yeah. like that without it being natural. Mm-mm. Can you imagine like serving her at a restaurant? Like, oh, fuck. Can you imagine fucking her and just looking at it? Just that, that <laughs> ice cold pe- Vagina I mean, around your awesome cock. Rack, obviously. I mean, the fucking walk of atonement. I mean, I'm just staring straight at the tits. Fucking her back, fucking Ann Coulter, dude. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> and I would enjoy every second of it. I know. Oh, dude. Like, yes! I. Okay, this is. I'm not. This is sort of total fucking tangent here. But isn't there just something so fucking charming about women that are just totally fucking miserable people? Mm hmm. There's this okay. I'm I, I I'm working at a school and there's this teacher that is just just fucking on the kids all the time. I mean, just just meaner and shit. Never smiles. She made eye contact with me for the first time today, and looked away and grimaced. <laughs> I mean, and I just I'm just like I am in fucking love with this lady. I am just like, wow, what a miserable person. It's so charming. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's like I she is and she's a beautiful woman miserable and i'm just like she just needs a good dick in. dude no women like that i'm just i'm just like oh be be mean to me <laughs> make i you'll be paid back in full i promise earn it <laughs> start calling her daddy i don't want to feel guilty for how i treat you <laughs> wow <laughs> that's all that's all we're searching for in life is people that we can be mean to yeah i i doubt kinsey is watching but if she is i bet she's so glad i talked about this lady because i come home and tell her about it. I'm like this fucking bitch i work with she is just mean and shit she likes she, she's a kindergarten teacher by the way oh she, this kid walked around the corner today, and he was waving his arms, just just being a child for a second. She's like, "Hey, it's nine a.m. We're not crazy, we're not being crazy." And it was just like, "Wow, oh, dude, I know." I'm just like, I, I look at the journeyman knows that I'm just like had the biggest like like you know crush on her essentially, and I look at him like, and he's like, and I just like I bet that I bet she is just her husband just must be the most henpecked little bastard on the planet just. Some miserable, like he just like can't stand going home. Or he's got a fuck, yeah. He's gonna Chris. I, that's gonna be a Chris Watts family right there. Chris <laughs> Watts family in the making. Jesus. And she's gonna be the Chris Watts dude. <laughs> I'm gonna come there and be like, God, yeah, wow, did you hear about Miss Anderson? She drowned her babies in a bathtub. You know, <laughs> like, I knew it. <laughs> Wowzers. <laughs> These aren't real names, and I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm covering my ass here, but yeah, nice. good stuff. Glad nobody agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally agree with you. So, uh, one more topic before we head out of here. It's getting a little late. Um, I watched the Ted Bundy movie on Netflix. Which? The, the one with Zac Efron. Okay, how was that? Mildly okay. Eh, because of Zac Efron or because it's fucking Z- Ted Bundy? Zac Efron did an awesome job as Ted Bundy. Okay. Awesome job. The movie itself, it was weird because, like, 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't want to be the guy that's like, it showed no murder, but it didn't show anything. It was just like straight in, he gets caught, he gets arrested. Straight in, he goes to the trial. And then it jumps back and forth between like that kind of stuff and then his relationship with um, whatever his girlfriend was. Wife, whatever. Fian- she was a fiance. I don't think they ever married. but um, And then it, it just shows him escaping. And then it's like, it doesn't. It doesn't show any of the time while he was out, like escaped, before they caught him again. Like it just no straight. No one up, knows. I mean, you're right. You're absolutely right. But for the sake of a movie, they could make some shit up. But no, um, I don't think that was the point of the movie, though. But it, it's just a lot of just jumping around between trial and. They don't and show any of the murders. Time. No, they no murders. Hmm. No. Yes, they do. They don't show him doing it though. They show him hit him in the head with a crowbar, dude. It. Oh yeah, that's right. You're right. You're right. That was at the very end. Yeah, the the movie plays. Spoiler. The movie plays on the plot of <laughs> he killed even someone? though you know why, even though you know that he did it. The purpose of the film is to make him charm you to go, holy shit, maybe he was framed. Wow, and it does a good no, job of that. I like I like the way you're putting that. That makes sense. Yeah, that's the whole point of the film. That's why Zac Efron was cast, mm-hmm. and he did. An amazing. Job. He did an, yeah, maybe absolutely I did. Incredible maybe I was a little job. presumptuous about this film because uh, it's very good. John Malkovich also did a fucking yeah. awesome job as the judge mm-hmm. that, uh, during the trial that uh, <sighs> Ted Bundy's representing himself. Like he did a real John Malkovich did awesome. James Hetfield did all dude. of five minutes, which was unfortunate. I wanted to see more James Hetfield. Um, Ted Bundy got arrested by Metallica. He did. James Hetfield is the lead singer of Metallica. And he's in it. He plays, oh, he okay, plays okay. the cop. He plays that, the cop that arrests him the first time. Yeah. Huh. I might have misjudged this. I tend, okay, that thing that you and I have in common that we found out recently has gotten me out of the whole murder porn stuff. Like, I just, you know, it's, <laughs> no, not, not literal murder porn. Well, what, like, what did we find out recently about it? What? You're from Delphi. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. And that has just, it, it's not that I have a problem with Delphi it. Too. I understand the fascination with every, every bit of it that people have because I was the same exact way. It's just now I'm just kind of like it just doesn't interest me so mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. It's like I, it's like I, I I'm uh uh what's the word uh whatever you eat the same food too many times you get tired of it. Well that like I now I know too much about the subject and I'm just kind of like you yeah know, it's not interesting anymore. It's not fun. I'll say the one thing they could have done better in the film because they just show basically when he gets caught to his time in court. That's pretty much what they show. They also show a lot of, like, uh, his girlfriend, like, what she's going through. Well, they focus a lot on, like, his relationship prior to all the, what he admitted to the murders, at least, between 74 and 78. focuses on the relationship that he had prior to that and how it's affecting that relationship. Hmm. And then, like I said, he, it's to charm you to go, holy shit, like, maybe he was framed. Because it worked on me, and I was like, you know, that is, like, weird-ass evidence that they have. And then, like, the film doesn't show how good of evidence they had against him. That's my one kind of issue I had with the film. Hmm. Like, they they publicized the trial by television, and the big damning evidence was teeth marks. It was the first marks. televised trial, right? Yeah. The damaging evidence was teeth marks that he left behind at the scene of the crime. Dental records. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I read a book about him. And that's really what they show. They don't show, like, they don't go into depth of, like, just how fucked up he was. Where, like, you know, he, he is decapitating people and, like, fucking their corpses. They don't... Yeah, or some chick's head around. Yeah, they don't go around showing that stuff and even talking about it. Go for it, man. It. I've had that plenty of times. Yeah, it's all yeah. you. I, I thought I was very something. <laughs> I'm like a little baby. What a piece of shit. I'm a little, little cub among lions. But, uh... Overall, I thought the film was pretty good. I thought all the acting in it was, you know, very good. Hmm. Fucking Haley Joel Osment. Mm-hmm. Like, hmm. Is it I'm fat actually, Haley Joel Osment? Yes. Okay. Sounds more like a Mindhunters kind <laughs> it's not, of experience. It's not Sixth it Sense. I love Mind Secondhand Hunters. Lions, Haley Joel Osment. It's, it's old. Yeah, if it doesn't Fucking show the murders, like, I'm into it. For some reason. Like just, you said, it just shows one, and that's kind of like the very after, end of the yeah, movie. Yeah, it's like, it's like finally. Right hit. before he gets executed. It's like it's like when you finally come like he's finally Spoilers. coming to terms with like <laughs> yeah I did it and up until then it's just like 
No, I didn't do it. He was like they show yeah, that. Yeah, that's he, really common too. Like they show that he they wasn't always denial. say that. Well, not all of them, but it's really common that they're just vehemently denying it, no matter how damning the evidence is. Well, yeah. it's it's almost like it's all, it's a different part of them that either they don't want to accept or that like they they just don't know about. Huh? It's almost like a blackout type thing. Maybe I'm not I'm not I'm not even venturing into like multiple personality. I don't remember that. Territory. I no, no, I understand. I understand what you're saying. It's kind of like how people today can uh, hear something, see something, know it's true, but at the same time, just say that's not true. So, only time I've ever been cheated on, I caught, her. I caught her red-handed, not in the act, but like straight up messaging the guy. Man, digital age, bro. And I, I took a picture of the message that she sent him. It was a giant one, you know, and it said straight up. Ever, it detailed everything that I needed to know. Like, just straight up said what I needed to know. I didn't have to draw conclusions. It just, in plain black and white, it was there. I woke up, saw this, took a picture of it, went to work. It's six in the morning. I'm at work. Before, like, line starts at 6.07. I'm sitting there waiting for the line to start, and I'm like, fuck it. Changed my relationship status to single. <laughs> I didn't even talk to her about it. I just mm. did that. Hmm. Mind games. Full halfway, strategy, Cog. Let's see if it plays Halfway off. through the I day. I bet her, her fucking just felt herself get lightheaded. Halfway through the day, I get I, I don't even get a text. I see a status on Facebook. I guess I'm single now. Oh, she's a coward too, huh? And then she starts texting me a little bit after that. But she starts, she's like, what the fuck? And I just sent her a picture of her message. Her message. Oh. And she denies it. Hmm. She's like, she straight up tells me, I did not cheat on you. I was like, really? Then why did you say That's hey, the most like basic lie. Like that she had I know, nothing like, else. Like how then why in this message did you state I don't want a relationship, I just want to keep having sex? Oh. <laughs> I don't have time for a relationship. When you're yeah, Damn. of course you don't, because you're already in one. Um Tough read, buddy. But no, I, I talked to her, I think, three years later. I'm friends with her now. We're cool. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, I don't know. Because I, I actually straight up asked her. I was like, why, when I had like straight up 100% evidence, why did you still deny it? Like I straight up sent you my evidence that was your message. Why did... How can you straight – how can you like straight up to my face tell me I did not cheat on you when you did? She's like, I was in denial of it myself. I mean just, just desperate. And, yeah. Like, She's like, I was in denial of it and like I was in, in denial of what I did. I said the same exact thing. I, I, yeah. It was <laughs> – I was on the phone with her and she's like – she just goes quiet for like 10 seconds after I said, well, how come uh, his car was at your house at 3 in the morning? And she just like sits there, and she's like, I, "I didn't cheat on you." Well, that's I've been caught. Yeah, yeah. She, well, yeah, yeah. Like we we both knew, we both knew. It was, yeah, and there was, and it's like she just didn't know what to say. It was just kind of a desperate hail mary. You know, maybe <laughs> I was gonna be like, "Oh, thank God." <laughs> <laughs> oh, we slept in separate beds. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't think it was even Carl's at her house. It was something. It was just like, it was just even more damning, and I was just like. I was so caught off guard by this, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go <laughs> click. <laughs> yeah. But that, that just goes to show you, like, may, maybe in that same – maybe they're connected. Maybe, like, when we do things that we don't think we're capable of, <laughs> we just tend to block it out and just repress it. Oh, I, I think it's – I think it's it's similar to that, but my theory is more along the lines of it's – when you badly want something to be true, your brain can just grant your wish in a way. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Or if you want something to be untrue. Maybe Ted Bundy same. just hated being in jail so much that he was like, man, I wish I didn't kill those bitches. And he was just like, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. He was like, I can just Eureka. Well, he yeah. was highly charismatic. So, I mean, well, whether, <laughs> whether that was him convincing himself or just him straight up lying to people. In the movie, I think that the best liars are people obsession. who can believe what they're saying. Mm -hmm. In the movie, it shows that he has an obsession with the girl that he's yes, been yeah. with. Like, that's his whole drive to keep getting out. Is he has this like obsession that she won't like talk to him or 
she hasn't stuck mm. by him. Hmm. I wonder if it was ego related or if he was really in love with her. Mister. I think he was really in love with her. I, mean, I haven't watched the movie yet, so he didn't chop her head off and they were together like since nineteen sixty six. Like it's crazy. She she like starts like looking back on like certain memories and stuff and she's like, Wow. So the signs were there. <laughs> but he never did it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um it is really weird how the how that we can all have this kind of duality mm-hmm. where it, there's who you are and then there's who you are. Yeah. You know? And and that's kind of like the, what I was touching on with the whole apocalypse scenario. It's like, no, I, I, I'm not I, – I, I mean, we're all evil because we're just – evil is just not really a thing. It's just when you let go of empathy and stuff, which we're all capable of one way Evil's or another. Evil's just perspective. Yes. But we all know, like, I, I don't want to harm somebody. I don't want to do bad things and stuff. But then you can just go play Grand Theft Auto. And get it out of your system. Yeah, and and just there's this there's this mental switch, and it's just like, you know, you were kind of talking about your instincts, like you know, your who you really are. It's like who you really are if you let go of everything that's makes you who you are. Almost, you know what I mean? It's it's kind of like how, you know, how like humans used to be essentially animals. We, you know, it's like that's still there. It's kind of like when you identify as an Apache helicopter. <laughs> Or maybe, or it's like it, it's like human beings used to be just very basic creatures, yeah. and then primates. we developed all these complex systems to, to watch that fucking advance. chimpanzees work. That's yeah. what we were. That's what we are. Yeah, and so really, I just think that 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 thought I'm having of the post apocalypse is like, what if all the things about me making a human being shut off, but all those chemical rewards were still there? That would make me compelled to do things, but I had no emotional attachment to what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I would just exist to get adrenaline and dopamine. And it's just, yeah, I believe that there's, just, it's like everything that makes us human is almost like the extra shit that mm-hmm. makes it, that, you know, makes us different from being actual humans. We've got the extra shit. It, yeah, it's hard for me to articulate. I don't know the words. No, but no, it's no. Just, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. All uh, those, all those basic systems are still in our brain. And maybe, you know. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not poking fun at all. Like we literally just have a little bit of extra shit. It's the only thing that differentiates us. Mm-hmm. It's like you only feel bad for doing things because for for some reason somebody was able to make you understand guilt for doing it. I think on other countries where like rape is really common and they don't even feel bad for doing it no matter how much the victim appears to be suffering and stuff. It's like that's not just because there's something flawed about that particular race. It's mm-hmm. a it's what they were taught. It's social. Yeah, and, and it's just so strange social that, constructs. like, good and evil is, like you said, it's perspective. We're all products of our environment. It's the like, it, it, uh, nature versus nurture. I mean, fucking psychology Miranda, 101. She brought up something while we were driving the other day, and I just – I think it involved something in the Middle East and, you know, how they do things. And I'm like, you got to think about it. Like, that's their way of life. We – I mean, you think it's super shitty or evil, but to them, that's just their life. Well, I mean, there are things that they do that are inherently evil, like selling their children to the madrasas so they can afford. I think it involved they like can't feed their children. I think it involved like uh, marrying a nine-year-old and like having like ha- being able to have babies by the time they're twelve or something like that. Like it's something along the lines. Like that's just normal to them. Like, this is where this is what broke me out of libertarianism. Is because the oh, whole, wow. you know, like, you know, we respect everybody's beliefs and different cultures and stuff. I took it one step further and I was like, no, I, I like my beliefs and not theirs. And it's just like, so these people that do it in the Middle East, it's like, sure, they don't know there's anything wrong. It's just their culture and stuff. I don't like it. So I want I want to see it wiped out. And, and you know, it's it's a – not like all, <laughs> not all Muslim people, I should clarify. I'm talking about like the, the – when people talk about this, how it's a cultural thing here and that, it's like, I understand – so if we're all just talking about how everyone's actually innocent and it's not, you know, it's not actually good and evil. It's what how there is. It's like, okay, well then, is it really evil to say like, no, I want everyone to be like me. I like I, I want my will expressed. Do you understand what I'm asking? Like, if if we have to not be mad at these people, not blame them for the evil things they do that offend us because they don't know it's horrible. Why is it? Why get offended by the idea that I was like, okay, well I want to stop them. And vice versa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why should they be offended by what we do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not saying, like, I want Middle East wiped out. <laughs> so I'm saying that 
if we're supposed to be forgiving of the differences in cultures and stuff, but so we're saying that nobody's evil, why get angry and offended when people are like, okay, but I am against another culture then. I just have a problem with another culture. I'm posing this as an actual question. I haven't thought about this deeply. I don't have any concrete beliefs on any on so any like, of. So, if I understand what you're asking, it's like, yeah, why it, do we it, see like, oh, it's just their culture, and we view that as okay, but why not? Like, let's say just like the KKK. Why do we see them as bad? Essentially, if I have to, it's how about let me let me ask, make it more clear. If you're asking me to respect, you know, like uh, your beliefs, they're your beliefs, and I shouldn't interfere there. What if my belief is I should? Can you respect that, that I feel like I should? To make it the most basic terms possible. It's like, why does it become over the line and make it offensive to a lot of people when you say like, okay, well, I just don't want people to do it, so I'll, I'll, I want to stop them from doing it. It's the, the, This question came into my head because I was talking to a guy about um, – he – okay, here's a good one. Abortion. I uh, am very empathetic to anti-abortionists because they believe it's actually killing babies. Mm -hmm. I understand. Who wouldn't be against that? But I think you're wrong. And just because you have altruistic reasons for your beliefs doesn't mean I shouldn't do everything I can to um, horrify you and make the thing you don't want to ha be the way of life be the way of life. It's like I, I shouldn't I, – I don't need to take that into account. Um, it's like if I – uh, and it's like respecting religious beliefs. If what if I was in supreme dictator Earth, and I said, okay, well, no more religion. It's illegal. If I'm supposed to respect your beliefs, what if my belief is that it's really horrible? And <laughs> never mind. I it's not a subject I'm good at. Uh, I can't. I, it's an idea that yeah. I haven't really found a good way to express. Mm -hmm. But I'm on this thinking of if we have to respect everyone's beliefs. Why though? Why do we have to respect everyone's? Beliefs? You shouldn't have to. Yeah, you absolutely you. should not have to. Yes, thank you. I if I don't like what you do, like it's like no, I'm gonna try to stop you. I don't care if you think, oh, you have to respect my beliefs. I'm not harming you. It's like so, I'm harming you. I'm coming to stop you from doing that thing because I don't like it. You have you absolutely should not have to cater to anyone. Yes, if if it's not affecting you, no. That's see, that's where that, why no, is the line even there? If, even if it's not affecting you. Yeah, because well, if it's not affecting, you, then why are you, why are you even bothering? I'm saying this as a progressive. Child anyway. death in India is something that I give a shit about. Okay. Hmm. It doesn't affect me at all. I don't live in India. I don't. But ever you have, care about it. But I give a shit about it. There you go. I want it to stop. There you go. So that. that yeah, yeah, I'm saying that's like, why I give a shit about and, it. And flip the script onto um, uh, flip the script to apply it to all beliefs. If. I can stop you from doing something that you think you should have the right to do. Well, it's just it's just too bad. Uh, it's hard. Like I said, it's it's a hard concept for me to kind of articulate. But what's going on in my head is I've gone past the whole if everyone has to respect everyone's beliefs because they're not affecting them. Why 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 is that line there? Why do we even believe in the human right of another person to um, dictate to someone else what they? Yeah, it's weird. It's like it's 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 almost like a contradictory belief I have. It, it, I, believe, I, I believe I'm doing a terrible more, job expressing it, but I believe with more time, going, this you, can, you see where I'm going. This could be articulated very well and well argued. Um, I'm better at writing than I am at speaking about. Yes, I could, I, you know. I, I feel you there. Uh, I feel if we had more time to really get this out and really break it down. Mm. We could we could have a good talk about it. And, yeah, I mean, not that this. Sorry for the clumsy application. No, I get, I'm, 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 I get it. It's just something I've been thinking about lately. It's like one yeah, of those. You yeah, know, everybody's got like something on their mind a lot. Mine has been like, is it really wrong to, like, I'm I'm liberal. Is it really wrong for me to fight conservatives? Whether we sit here and discuss it or not, mm -hmm. it's it's yeah. it's food for thought. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's cool. It's it's always cool to like see other people's beliefs and see how they differ from yours and if and or, or challenge your own thoughts. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's one of the one of the pillars of this show is to be challenged, like to cha your thoughts to be challenged by something. Well, not not even necessarily that, but to challenge. Yes, I was just adding to what yeah. you were saying. Uh, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, uh, you're the unpopular opinion guy, but you always most of your opinions, and I, that's a solid most. Now, I'm not I'm not saying like most. I'm saying like. 
99% of your opinions can be backed up with some kind of reasoning. Mm -hmm. I, I, I justify the majority of the shit that I say. Yeah. Or do. So therefore, you have these opinions and those opinions can challenge other people's opinions, but in a way that makes them think maybe he's right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's not right, but I'm still wrong. Yeah, a lot of the shit that I say is extremely controversial, and some people might say it's mean and like. But it's thought provoking. I don't. I don't look at it as being right, wrong, good, bad, and different. Mean, nice. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't look at it that way. But it's just the opinion that I hold for the reasons that and and the reasons that I hold that opinion. A lot of the show is this specific show is. I mean, yeah, we have a good time. Yeah, it can be chaotic and, like, laughter abound. Like, fucking... So, sometimes we talk about people fucking over by the dumpster area. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, like, <laughs> we also we also pride ourselves in, like, having these deep, thought-provoking conversations that could possibly challenge our opinions and beliefs and, you know, all of that. And And I think that's really cool that we have that. So... We've had the privilege of having almost a brain trust of people on the show. Yes. Yeah. Because it's have. it's like you know, there was times where, you know, it was just you and I and, and we would fucking get deep in deep in like like fucking simulation theory or something yeah. like that. And then, you know, we start off an episode with, with people fucking by siblings fucking by a dumpster <laughs> and then, you know, almost immediately we take a turn in the opposite direction and go super serious. And then we're right back to having a good time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had people get legit pissed on this show. Oh yeah, and I've been one of them. Yeah, we. I'm very pissed today about the fucking things here about everything I like on television. Fuck your television. <laughs> I mean, apparently, <laughs> you don't have a right to it. But I think <laughs> we're not related. <laughs> I think with all that being said, it's it's time we cut we cut this to a close. I need to eat dinner and go to bed. Yeah, I need to eat dinner and go to bed. It was a very very tremendous pleasure. Thank you for having me. I, yeah. I'm so glad to have you back, and I want you to have you back again. You know, like I, I said that last time, and you know, last time we hung out for like I think another hour and a half after. Yeah, we mm -hmm. had a fucking little Arby set. Yeah, we did. And that was yeah, that was a great and, fucking time. And I drove a long way to be here, and it was a taxing drive. I beg both of you to come have a uh, soda with me at a restaurant at the very minimum. I cannot do that this no, time. Not, no, no, no. This time made, around, I, get I cannot it, I get do you. that. You have 4 a.m., I need to sleep too. What's your wake up time? 5.30. Okay, well, that means 90 minutes. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for selling yourself out there. You should have said four, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but, so. you know, uh, thanks, Jack, so much <laughs> My for pleasure. driving over here. And you want a very sincere compliment on the way here, which, I, don't worry, I love hanging out with you guys, but it was a tough drive. I'm like, is this really worth driving all the way to Lafayette for? Once again, yes, absolutely. I am so fucking glad that I did that drive. I stayed up for like four days in a row and fucking didn't get nearly enough sleep and I was falling asleep at the wheel. So I had a lot to do in the house. I had a lot to do and I have an Adderall prescription. It Come just fucking brrr, it. got it all done. But yeah, I was like, man, I, I, I don't know if I can do this. So fucking glad I did. It was a great time. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad you shared the, the PCP story or <coughs> potential PCP story. Always a pleasure. That is definitely going to go into our greatest hits. Oh, absolutely. I wish I, I was a more exciting person than that being my best story, but, but if that's <laughs> no, the best. That's, it, that's, that's a fucking killer. That's fucking cream of the crop, my man. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, cream so, of the crop always rises to the top. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'll just start. go ahead and start closing this. Uh, thank you guys, listeners out there. Thank you, watchers out there on the live stream. Uh, I just want to say this real quick. Uh, we've had a steady increase in numbers lately mm -hmm. and yeah it's not much it's 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 like maybe 30 downloads but you know we've had we've seen that increase and you know let's keep it going guys if if you're listening to this share the podcast if you're watching this you guys know may, every person knows at least five to ten people at least and so if you share this those five to ten people might see this and become a fan they might enjoy what they're hearing or they'll get the PCP brothers fucking by a dumpster story and be like, what the fuck is this by? Or they'll love it. Who knows? But uh, that's the exciting thing about this. So if you enjoy this, share it. Share the page. Share the live stream. Share the audio file. Share something. Give us a like. Um, I'm not even going to go into the Patreon. If you want to donate, 
if, and, and pledge to us, cool. But the point is, listen, watch. We have a great time doing this, and I think you will enjoy listening to us or watching. And if you're watching, then you can participate in the chat and talk to us too. So, yeah, we are here every Tuesday live around 5.30 or 6, right here on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And you can catch us in audio form on Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and iTunes on our own feed. You can also check us out on the Journey Into Comics feed where you get a bunch of shows. So check out Journey Into Comics, same same platforms, plus a few more. Um, check And while we're st- while Game of Thrones is still on, check out Game of Kingshare every, live every Thursday and in audio form every Friday right here on the podcast if you feed. But until then, I've been Dick. I'm Tyler. Thanks, Jack. Happy to be And thanks, Matt. Word. (laughs) Word. And please make every day a big dick day. Word to your mother. Bye, guys. Oh, man, we still got like 15 seconds before two hours exactly. What kind of bullshit (laughs) did you put in here? In-game fucking eclipse Titanic. Yeah, it did. It's over the two billion mark. So it's the highest grossing movie of all time now? Avatar's still ahead of it. Oh. Yeah.